Hello everyone, welcome to What If Issei Got Betrayed and Join the White Dragon Empress Part 7. Before we start please go support Abraham Josu Salas Roa for writing that awesome fanfic, now let's begin. This is the translated version I made, there will be some wrong he or she calling here because it's translated so let me clear this essay is a male in this story. Chapter 23 New Beginning and a New and Old Home On a quiet morning, about two days after the formation of Team DXD. In the Haidu residence and in a certain room there, on a bed you could see how there were four figures lying down. One of them had very long, lush and beautiful silver white hair. The other two also had very beautiful long hair that was jet black like the night and that transmitted strength just by looking at it. And lastly, a person with deep brown hair. These people were none other than. Valerie, Issei, Office and Lilith, who slept together in the boys' room. Valerie was sleeping on Issei's right side while he hugged her arm and was wearing a semi-transparent nightgown. Office and Lilith were sleeping hugging each other on Issei's left side and were wearing black pajamas with their hair down. And you could hear their rhythmic breathing, a sign that they were fast asleep. While with Issei, he was slowly waking up and despite having gone to sleep early the day before, you could tell that he was a little tired. And although he could move a little, one of her arms was already used as a pillow by Valerie who was next to her and she had decided that her arms were the best pillows for him to sleep on. Dot Issei saw her and smiled to himself. He liked that feeling of having her close to him, he could feel her warmth without a doubt. And that was a feeling that didn't bother him at all. He also enjoyed waking up and being able to smell the scent of his hair. And paying a little attention to Office and Lilith, he was not at all bothered by the presence of both of them in his room. He had already gotten used to it quickly. Since they both spend their time following him all the time and always learning from him. Not to mention that, in the words of Office, by having their counterpart, Lilith, with them, with her help they can stabilize the unstable power of Office that runs through Issei's body, making it a little easier for him to be able to use that power when the time comes. Moment. But, it was at that that she felt an extra weight on top of him. And he had little time to think about that, since when he felt someone slip under the sheets, a naked Kuroka emerged from them. With her hair completely loose and natural. Hey Kuroka. The aforementioned she let out a light laugh as she put a finger on Issei's lips and smiled flirtatiously at him. If you Naya. Good morning, Issei Naya. Kuroka said sounding somewhat sensual that almost fried the brunette's brain. Yufufufu. How cute you look all nervous Naya. But just that, Issei could feel how the soft and smooth sensation of Kuroka's skin and breasts was transmitted directly to his skin, since he was only in shorts without a shirt. Said sensation was new and pleasant, it was warm and soft, just like Valerie's, but still she had her own unique sensation that made her unmistakable. Issei smiled sighing. Good morning Kuroka. And I see that you continue with the same thing. That doesn't bother me though. You could have joined the night if you wanted. Munaya, thank you. Kuroka hugged Issei, making the feeling more intense. Although Issei was internally enjoying that incredible feeling in his chest, he was not smiling slightly perverse like before. It seems that having stopped being a virgin, his libido and perversion have dropped too much to the point where Issei is almost immune to the seduction and temptation, but that does not mean that he does not admire the beauty of women, he still does, only now more controlled. And to think that she could have lost her perversion sooner if she had had relations with Rias and the others before. Or well, what happened, happened. With that, Kuroka licked her lips erotically, giving Issei a slight shiver. Who before she could say anything, Kuroka started kissing Issei's neck, giving him a good feeling. Although he had one arm free while the other was used as a pillow by Valerie who was sleeping next to him, he would not like to wake her now that she was sleeping so peacefully, the same for Office and Lilith. Although he also knew that waking them up while in such a compromising situation would become a morning scandal to which little by little and unintentionally, he became accustomed. In his personal opinion, Issei loved it when Kuroka acted cute and hexy, but that was one of the triggers for fights between the girls. And right now, the feeling he had of his legs intertwining with hers was very nice, like in romance movies. Ni, Issei Naya. Your body feels very good. It shows how hard you've trained. Kuroka said running a finger along Issei's well-toned chest. Yufufufu, a man's skin feels better than I thought. Or is it because it's Issei's skin? Kuroka smiled erotically. Hey, Issei Naya, does my body give you a good feeling? Issei blushed a little, but he still looked into her eyes. Issei couldn't really lie. Yes, your body is very nice, Kuroka. It's warm and soft. Yufufufu. Kuroka put on a brightly cute smile. You can enjoy my body more if you want, I also want to know more about Issei's body Naya. Although even though I say that, there is a scary one Ichan next to you. So I think it can't be possible, but on the other hand, that could be fun. Kuroka said showing a somewhat sadistic and hexy attitude at the same time. Issei became nervous at that, since as far as he knows, Kuroka in that state was very unpredictable, similar to Akeno Dot in that case, I don't think we should do anything else, if Valerie wakes up and finds us, there will be a fuss. 
There Yanaya don't you think that's more exciting? Kuroka said with a sultry expression as he slowly moved her face closer to his says. And little by little the beautiful Nekashu began to kiss his say's neck again, giving the boy sensations of tickling. Or pleasure, that is not known. Issei on the other hand could not do anything, although he could moving the only arm he had free, he unconsciously refused to stop Kuroka, although those little pranks were also becoming an everyday occurrence, he was already getting used to it. Even so, just when he was about to let himself get carried away by that situation, he heard that voice. Kuroka what are you doing? When did you enter this room? Issei tensed up when he heard that voice, and when he turned around. He could see Valerie already up, with a tender smile on her face, emanating an unfriendly blue-white aura. Issei wasn't stupid, he knew that Valerie was upset. Very upset. And that made her very cute even though she wanted to be scary. Biedo, good morning, Valerie, how did you sleep? Said Issei, wanting to prevent the demon bread from unleashing. Yes, I slept very well. Valerie saw him with a beautiful smile like little girls have. Issei believed that she could divert the topic, but she certainly didn't know that women were unpredictable, until Valerie turned to look at Kuroka with sharp eyes so. You haven't answered my question, Kuroka. Valerie's look again showed discontent. It was incredible to say how women could go from smiling faces that flashed happiness to annoying ones that would scare a mayor god and possibly even Great Red himself. Although there were times that their smiling faces when angry were even scarier. Dot. The months he lived in his house surrounded by women were enough to make him understand that being among women was being in the middle of a war zone. Although he thought that perhaps the war zone was less scary. Issei thought that, mentally preparing himself for the scandal that was going to happen. Which was confirmed when Kuroka linked her hand with his and showed it to Valerie. This is close contact Naya. I also wanted to spend a nice morning with Issei Naya, since it's unfair that you have him all to yourself, even though you also know what we agreed on a long time ago Naya. Moo. Valerie pouted. Dot, I know what we talked about and I accept it, but for a while I want to be Issei's only one. Are you Naya and aren't you taking advantage of your situation Naya? Kuroka said innocently. Issei seemed to hear something breaking inside Valerie. Surely his patience. Valerie and Kuroka were friends. The best and maybe that's why they know how to hit where it hurts. Issei couldn't help but compare Valerie and Kuroka's friendship a little with that of Ria's and Akeno. Yes, they are very similar. And with that, both girls began to emanate unfriendly auras. Um? Has it already dawned? Said a sleepy office who was waking up due to the discussion between the two girls. On you. Lilith waking up. But Lilith wants to continue sleeping. Lilith ignored the discussion that was taking place. Issei, although she calmed down a little in the presence of Office and Lilith, who calmed her fear a little. She couldn't let them see this dot scene. And no. Office, Lilith, keep sleeping. It's still early. Issei caressed the heads of both Auroboro sisters, urging them to return to their sleep. Um? Then it's okay. Office accepted Issei's offer without buts and continued with her reassuring dream. Lilith sleep even more. Both Auroboro sisters hugged each other again while they slept, and Issei caressed her heads with a smile on her face. At that, a pillow hit Kuroka, who took the pillow and smiled. Don't even think I'll let you gain ground, Kuroka. Said Valerie, who received a pillow in the face from Kuroka in response. Ufufufu Naya. Maybe you will be the first Naya, but I won't let myself be defeated. One way or another, I will be Issei's favorite Naya. Whether you like it or not. Never. But that statement, a pillow fight began between the two beautiful and naked girls, since Valerie even took off her nightgown and didn't care that she was exposed if Issei was the only one who saw her. What a nice sight. And even more so when both of their breasts moved in the process. Which although Issei stared, she didn't do it with an idiotic face, but with interest. Issei sama, Valerie sama, breakfast is ready. Go to the dining room. Lefei entered the room, remaining petrified at the entrance of the room. It is worth mentioning that when she saw Valerie and Kuroka completely naked while Issei was in bed half naked so to speak, the girl was turned to stone. L sorry for interrupting. TT take SSS her time. She she said in a robotic voice, closing the door. Issei put a hand on his head when he saw that they made Lefei see a scene that was not holy for her health. Just seeing Lefei in her attitude reminded Issei of Asia, both being very innocent when it comes to hexwell matters, although Lefei is less dense in that area, since she was not raised in a church like Asia. But still, Issei made sure that nothing indecent corrupts Lefei, she is too pure for this. It was in that. Issei, Valerie, time to get up sleepyheads. Lefei must have told them that it's time for breakfast, right? The door opened again, showing Tiamat who was wearing a beautiful half-smile dot so quickly, it's time to. As if it were a repeated scene, Tiamat, like Lefei, stood petrified watching the scene that could very well be one from the TV show Playboy, with a boy enjoying a beautiful naked girls. Everything was the same as with Lefei, except for one thing. And that was that Tiamat would not stand by and watch such a scene. 
Mu it's not fair don't leave me out, Tiamat complained childishly and tenderly with a pout. But that, to the scandal made by Valerie and Karoka, Tiamat was added, who, by the way, also undressed and entered the hexy pillow fight. Issei, although he marveled at seeing the spectacular and heavenly naked body of Tiamat, at the same time his admiration was not exaggerated. She still remembers how before, when they lived in her house in the mountains, she ended up taking a small bath with Tiamat who washed her back, and that by an accident that seemed purposeful, Issei was able to see his naked body, and the memory continues. Cool. And she doesn't doubt that if it weren't for Valerie who saved him on that occasion, who knows how those two would have ended up. Greg and Albion for their part and within the boosted gear and divine dividing respectively, and seeing through the eyes of their wielders. They were absolutely speechless at all of this. Well they both admired Tiamat's beauty, at the same time they were dumbfounded that Tiamat was fighting for Issei's attention. That brat is a lucky bastard, with luck that even a god would envy. Issei just sighed smiling at all this. No doubt this is something that maybe happens every day. But putting all that aside, he remembered what day it was and what was going to happen now. Time to go back to the academy, although he is already at the end of the school year, but he still wants to go back. Already in the dining room. All the inhabitants of the house were eating at the big table. It's been a while since everyone last ate together, but there was a certain detail, and that was that the atmosphere was somewhere between calm and tense. Riaz and the others were still not used to the presence of Valerie and her team moving to this house, but they still couldn't complain, since their move here was approved even by Serzich's, although in reality this house still belongs to Issei and his parents. So they are the ones who have the last word. Although the chestnut tree's parents have not yet returned from their trip. The Amat was a different story, but the others still did not see her with complete confidence. Anyway, everyone who would go to the academy was dressed in their academy uniforms. But the most detailed thing is that both Valerie and Le Fay wore the Kuo Academy uniform. The reason? Simple. They were both transferred to the academy at Azazel's request, and said request was approved by Serzich's and his family who ran the school. Le Fay accepted that because she liked the idea of going to a regular school. Well Valerie was only going for a change of scenery, and also because he wanted to be with Issei. Although Azazel saw that as an opportunity for Valerie to act more like a girl her age. And today would be the first day for both girls. Obviously they offered the same to Kuroka and she refused, since she's too lazy for those things. So he decided to stay in the house and take care of it along with Tiamat, as well as Arthur and Biku, who would sometimes go out if the situation warranted it. Issei could feel the certain atmosphere combined between tense and calm, but no hostility or discomfort. And he didn't have to be a genius to know that, he was, so to speak, responsible for said environment after starting some kind of feud with his former entourage companions. In fact, he can't easily look at their faces without remembering that night, even though he revealed everything he stored in his subconscious. Ah, it's not time for that right now. Anyway, breakfast passed normally without any kind of talk or anything else other than Le Fay, mentioning his excitement and nervousness about going to the academy. With Issei assuring her that if she needs help, she should ask him. Which made the magician happy and blush, to Valerie's slight annoyance but happiness, while the others only became depressed at that. Asper was just chatting about some things with Valerie, who as always, was still under the effects of having taken one of the Sephiroth grails from her, since she still had her empty expression, but you could still feel the feeling in her. Dot. When they left the residence and headed toward school. Issei was wearing his usual uniform, and over it he wore a black jacket with a hood. Plus, she calmly walked hand in hand with Valerie. When Issei always dreamed of having a girlfriend, he imagined walking hand in hand with her to school, and boy did it come true. Obviously Le Fay pouted cutely. At that and Issei noticed it, so with a half smile, he offered his other free hand to Le Fay, who took it happily. So Issei going hand in hand with two first class beauties. The others had different or the same reactions when they saw that. With Ravel who began to act more Sunday ran and whispers began to insult Issei. Irina just had her head slightly lowered with a slight hint of sadness on her face. While Ross was for some reason, he saw that with some jealousy. How strange. The others only felt that, in truth, they lost their place next to Issei. The arrival at the academy was very normal. Apart from the fact that when those who were still outside, at the entrance of the academy, upon seeing that Haidu Issei had returned, they had different reactions in silence, and that's when the gossip and rumors began. But seeing it, so to speak, changed, as if it had a more mature air, it surprised some, but the majority did not swallow that so easily. Although seeing him arrive holding hands with two beautiful new girls never seen before, made them start to see him in a bad way as always. With the men cursing him for appearing again, and above all, he returned with two new girls, and that they were more beautiful than their idols. The girls only saw it with bad eyes as always. Great, back to the typical so to speak. Issei just sighed at that, it doesn't matter. He no longer cares what people think of him. Let them think what they want, at the end of the day, these hypocrites know nothing. 
And when they entered the academy and were in the hallways. Be well. We'll meet at the club when classes finish, if you want, of course. Ria said a little tense. See you. With that, Ria's went to her living room along with an Akeno who seemed more depressed than before. Until then. Kibo also went aside. Come on. You must introduce yourself to our class. Ravel said approaching La Fay, who nodded at his words. And so they both went to her living room, being followed by Kaneko and Gasper. Let's go. Issei said looking at Valerie, who nodded to his words. And just when they were going to start. Issei the screams of two familiar voices that Issei recognized were accompanied by a couple of blows to his head that knocked him back. And now what's wrong with you too Issei asked, a little annoyed and looking at those responsible, seeing that, in fact, it was Mitsuda and Motohama who were upset while crying. Will you disappear for almost two months and show your face here like it was nothing, although I must tell you that I really missed you old man. Motohama said the last thing adjusting his glasses. I'm wondering the same. Although. Mitsuda unexpectedly grabbed Issei by the neck and forced him to look at him aside from coming back, you look more mature than before that opinion of you began to change a little, and to top it all off, you're accompanied by Ria Senpai and the others again, but to make matters worse, you arrive with two new students, holding hands what does this mean Issei? E? Well. I know them and that's it. And I'll show you the academy later. Issei responded with a somewhat bitter and nervous smile for some reason. Obviously his response shocked his two friends, who fell to the ground on their knees. Dot. It's incredible. Issei came back a little cooler than before, and with two new top-notch beauties who must surpass our idols by many. Mitsuda said with a depressing aura. Especially that blonde lowly beauty, who from my point of view, has a well-developed chest. Motohama said, starting to fantasize a little. Obviously Issei didn't see that well, since if he remembers correctly, Motohama is, so to speak, a lolican. And there was no way he was going to let this moron corrupt his favorite mage. So, with all the reasoning in the world, Issei gave a sudden high kick that lifted Motohama up a little and left him lying on the ground to the astonishment of many. Sorry friend, but I can't let you corrupt Le Fay. She's had enough. Issei crossed his arms in a serious manner and with his eyes closed, as if to get his point across. Are they always like this? Valerie asked no one specifically, thinking that no one would answer him until. Be well. You could say so. Miraculously, Asia ventured to answer Valerie's question, who thanked him with his eyes. What a way to return to the academy. Once classes started and everyone went to their respective classrooms. In the first year classroom. Sensei began to introduce the new student. I'm very nice to meet you all. M my name is Le Fay Pendergan. Please let's get along. The magician introduced herself to her classmates in Kaneko, Gasper and Ravel's classroom. Where the men admired her beauty and before anyone asked a question. A I currently live in Haidu is a Sama's house. D, I mean senpai. And Nani the whole class was speechless at what Lefei said. Meanwhile, in the second year B classroom. Practically the same thing as in the first year was happening. My name is Valerie Lusager. I hope we get along well. The silver-haired beauty introduced herself to the entire class. And with that, the scandal began in the room. With the boys admiring the new beauty with silver hair and blue eyes, very beautiful. And in the words of perhaps the majority, Valerie is more beautiful than hers Roswa sensei. The girls felt some envy for Valerie's beauty that was superior to hers when Isama's academy. He looks as if his beauty has been given by a goddess. Issei smiled internally happily seeing that Valerie will be in his classroom. Although Azazel had already informed him before when he did the paperwork. According to Azazel, Valerie is old and intelligent enough to be someone who is in third year or even in university. But she decided that it would be good for Valerie to enjoy his youth and his school life even more, so that's why they put her in second year along with him. Since in a few months they will move on to third year, and it is better that way. Obviously Issei had to agree with Azazel about her analysis. In addition, Valerie presented himself with a different surname, which is a slightly altered version of the name. Lucifer. To avoid attracting attention. I previously lived in Europe, but I just moved to Japan. And I currently live in Haidu Issei's house. Nani the whole class was speechless at what Valerie said, while Issei himself began to have some nerves. Am you Issei always you and beautiful women I claim Mitsuda. Tell us what you did to meet this first class waifu and have her live with you, Motohama shouted wanting answers. Oh. Or maybe it could be that your illness was a lie and you took advantage of your time out of class to go for more women, right? Aikakiru asked shamelessly, making everyone look at Issei in different ways. Issei just sighed at all this. Today was certainly not his day. Anyway, when Sensei managed to calm down the entire class and everyone returned to their seats. Valerie sat in a seat in front of Issei and smiled at him, which he returned and many noticed that. And so the first class of the day began and. Ah, to hell with classes, let's go to recess. Dot. And Sensei left a room and rang the recess bell, and all the students were preparing to go to their places to eat. 
How on is say? With the help of Le Fay, we made you a bento, and I want us to eat together. Said Valerie showing a lunchbox of food to say. Heh, okay. After all, I made one for you too. Issei took out a lunchbox of food from his bag. Damn lucky you are Issei are you eating with a new girl too? Why don't you stop hoarding everyone? But Suda and Motohama complained, crying tears of blood ironically. He, this is fun and at the same time I'm curious. Aika adjusted her glasses that shined for a moment. Dot, hey, Haidu, what exactly is Lucidure sent to you that you two get along so well? His question of hers attracted the attention of many and made Issei himself a little nervous. He well. I'm his girlfriend. Valerie answered without further ado, interrupting Issei who was surely going to tell a lie. Well the entire class was speechless at what they heard and it took almost a minute and process what you heard. H. Haidu? She has dot. A. Right. Both boys and girls said that in good synchrony, even though they were not able to process well what they heard. Until. Damn you Issei you leave for a while and come back here like nothing happened and with a beautiful girlfriend. Traitor and die you broke our code completely we tolerated too much with so many girls following you and so on but you have a girlfriend. girlfriend.now you crossed the line. The two perverted friends cried even more blood from their eyes as they grabbed their hair and fell to their knees on the ground. With Issei looking at them even more idiotic than before. That's impossible there's no way someone like Lucidur Sen would be the girlfriend of a sick man like Haidu a girl said. I'm wondering the same. Surely she is extorting her like the rest. She said another. Makes sense. What's more, who in their right mind would love this idiot who has never done anything good in his life? Even another kid from the crowd got into the discussion. Several other students, including boys and girls, affirmed what was said by those who spoke, although others just remained silent or neutral. Even Asia, Zenovia and Arena were bothered by the insults towards Issei. And although they wanted to say something to defend him, internally they felt that they had no right to speak. Issei frowned as he heard the insults and complaints against him, as well as feeling his blood boil. And just when he was going to say anything. At that moment, a projection of a person's mind of his became present in front of him. De he. It was fun playing with a brat who never had experience with women. At the end of the day, no one will love you. You don't deserve to be loved. You deserve to perish alone. Rainer, she. When said projection left, Issei realized that everyone was still looking at him in a bad way. He was only distracted for a few seconds, but. Remembering what Rainer said and what the others said, he felt vulnerable. And without knowing why, I lower my head with a small hint of sadness. Excuse me. Issei simply began to leave the room without bothering to see anyone. Issei. I call him Valerie, but he didn't even go past her to see her Issei. Her brunette also didn't stop by to see her, and he left the room. Issei. Dot. Ooh um, that will teach him. The girl said that she started everything somewhat satisfied. Don't worry Lucidur san. That degenerate is gone, you don't have to humor him said another girl. However, just by hearing all that, Valerie understood the reason for Issei's reaction. These. These damn ones, not only did they insult him, but, perhaps, they made him remember his trauma. Valerie didn't. She had to be a genius to understand that Issei, even deep down, fears not being truly loved. And these bitches told him all that to his face. He can't forgive them for that. The Edo Lucidur san? Asked another girl, a little fearful when she saw that Valerie had his eyes down, with a gloomy expression. And when Valerie looked up again and faced the group of girls who insulted his love, many, or perhaps all, were frozen and somewhat afraid when they saw Valerie's threatening gaze, along with the slanted eyes of he. Degenerate. Sick. Extort. Who do you think you are, bitches, to talk about my essay like that? The Edo. And no. And us, just. The girl who started all this tried to give an excuse, or at least speak well. The others were in the same way, with the majority and those who agreed with that girl, scared by Valerie's expression. They felt like they were seeing a demon or a dragon in the eyes. Only Aika, Mitsuda, Motohama, Asia, Zenovi and Arena along with a few others remained normal, although with a slight fear of Valerie's gaze. Answer me, so what right do you say, that? Valerie asked coldly, slowly approaching the girl who started it all, who began to slowly back away. And Edo. And I. Answer. Two. Said Valerie, seeing that the girl who was afraid was cornered against the wall. And with that, Valerie put his left hand on the wall, close to the height of said head, as if blocking his escape route. Dot, you have not answer. The Edo. P. I think he is not a good influence on you, Lucidur san. M. You deserve better than that pervert with no future. The girl explained the reason for her insult, without knowing that for I hardly signed his death warrant. No future, you say. Valerie spoke with an even more terrifying voice and expression, and do you believe you have the right to decide the lives of others? What's more, neither you, nor anyone in this annoying classroom or this stupid school, knows what Issei is really like. Do you think you know him and know what he is really like just because he was that perverted female spy? 
but hypocrites, have you ever wondered what he's really like underneath that perverted side? Have they even asked him? What Valerie said left both the girl he had cornered and the entire class speechless, in addition to those from other classrooms who looked out to see what was happening. And seeing that no one responded, Valerie took that as an excuse. Answer. No. Well then they are more idiots than I thought. You blame and discriminate against others for no reason, idiots. What's more, you shouldn't care what Issei or I or anyone else does or doesn't do. Whether Issei has a girlfriend or not, or whether I am that girlfriend, that is not something that matters to any of you and no one in this place. Valerie unconsciously let out some of his aura, making all the humans afraid without understanding why, well the church trio understood the reason for everyone's fear. I'm with Issei because I really love him, and I even moved in with him. He is not extorting me, threatening me or anything. So, why don't they shut the hell up and just let us say and I live our lives in peace, the way we want to live it. Neither you nor anyone else has the right to replicate how you live your life, so better concentrate on living your stupid lives, instead of getting into other people's lives. Valerie finished giving his claim, leaving the entire room and those in the hallway who were looking speechless. With that, Valerie would take his bento and the one that Issei accidentally left, and with an extremely serious expression he headed to the room door to leave, where those who were at the door let her pass without saying anything, and Valerie left the room. With this, the entire room was enveloped in a sharp silence for a few seconds that seemed eternal to everyone. Until someone broke the silence by applauding, and everyone went to see who did that. Wow, excellent girls, in the end they overdid it. Ika said seriously, bringing everyone who was present out of their stupor. What do you mean, Kiryu-san? Asked Asia, a little fearful. Simple. Just as I say lucidure san no one should care about the lives of others, and no one has the right to give their opinion or try to manipulate the lives of others. If Haidu has a girlfriend and that turned out to be the new transfer student, then no one has the right to say anything. But no one could stay silent, and they had to start insulting Haidu and saying that he is someone with no future, even telling him that he doesn't deserve to be loved by anyone. What Ika said embarrassed many who agreed with what Ika said. The girl who started it all, who was most embarrassed. Some even began to feel sorry for Haidu Issei and had to agree with what Aika stated. Aika with a snort left the room with her bento in hand, being followed later by Mitsuda and Motohama, leaving the others without anything to say. In the courtyard of Kuo Academy. Issei was sitting, hugging his knees, under a tree. Where by coincidence, it was somewhat close to the old building where the occult club was located. Issei was crying silently, with his sobs being heard for the slightest of moments. But at the same time he was upset again telling others in their faces that he doesn't deserve anyone to love him. And that bothers and saddens him at the same time. Greg didn't know what to do in this situation to cheer up his partner. He only knew that the one who can lift his spirits is Valerie, and with her maybe he could vent. Say, are you okay? Valerie made an appearance in front of the brunette who stopped by to see her. Valerie felt a pang in her heart and great annoyance when she saw that Issei not only had traces of tears on his cheeks, but his eyes were a little swollen from crying so much. Internally I swear that I would not forgive the unfortunate people who made Issei cry and tried to break the heart that she had made with a lot of effort and was otherwise healthy. Sob. Elda. I'm sorry you saw something this pathetic, Valerie. T maybe. It's true. M you deserve better than a failure with no future like me. Said by Issei, it only caused Valerie without warning to kneel in front of him and wrap him in a sudden warm hug. Do not say it don't even think about saying it Valerie replied, strengthening his embrace even more. It doesn't matter what others say, Issei. I love you more than anything. More than my own life. And I don't like seeing you like this. I unconsciously fell in love with you when you joined my team, and when I thought I had lost you and that I would never see you again, I realized that in reality I liked you. And that will never change. Sob really? Ask Issei still sobbing. Always. Even if I have to share you, I will never leave you. Valerie said taking Issei's face, making him look at her. And then kiss him without hesitation. Issei cried a little more in that kiss, but he still reciprocated said kiss, hugging Valerie. His kiss was one that reflected all the love they had for each other. Whereupon separating after the passage of almost a minute, Valerie sat next to Issei under said tree and rested his head on Issei's shoulder. Feeling happy to feel his touch and warmth just like Issei, until a slightly worrying expression appeared on Valerie. I must also apologize, Issei. The aforementioned stopped by to see Valerie a little doubtfully. Dot, if I hadn't said that she was your girlfriend, you wouldn't have received those insults, and you wouldn't have cried. I'm sorry. Valerie closed her eyes when saying that. Don't worry. That doesn't matter. Issei said, making Valerie see a dot, even if you hadn't said anything. Surely they would have realized it one way or another, and the discussion that just occurred would have been inevitable. Maybe they have no right to judge you for believing they know you, to the point of exaggeratedly considering you a criminal. I don't forgive them for that said Valerie with a frown. Don't worry. I think I'm still weak-minded. 
I will have to start spiritual and mental training to not let myself be carried away by that kind of insults again. Said Issei with a half smile. Valerie sighed. Well, leaving this whole matter aside, shall we eat? Valerie asked, showing the bentos that he had with him. You left too quickly and forgot yours, so he brought it. Issei smiled. Thanks for that. With that, the celestial couple began to enjoy their respective bentos. Sometimes wanting to feed the other as a little for play. And everything happened happily, without knowing that someone was spying on them a little from a distance. Where hidden in the bushes, Aika was recording Issei and Valerie's moment, and she smiled softly at that. I hope this changes the minds of many. Anyway, when the break was over and everyone returned to their classrooms. Issei and Valerie walked hand in hand as always, ignoring everyone's different looks. And when they arrived at their classroom, they also ignored the looks of the students who seemed to be embarrassed by what had happened before, but they still didn't pay attention to them. And when classes finally ended and everyone went home. At the occult club. Ria's Gremory was watching a video on her phone that Ika Kiryu sent to all the students at the academy. And said video showed the dating relationship between Issei Haidu and Valerie Lucidger Lucifer. In addition to filtering what happened in the second B classroom during recess time. Ria's had already found out before what happened during the break in Issei's classroom, and she knew that this video published by Ika began to change the point of view in which everyone looked at Issei. All this was enough for Ria's to she understood again that Issei is better off with Valerie than with her. Since Ria's knew that even when Issei stopped doing perverted things at school before leaving, he made excuses not to go spying to focus more on his affairs as a demon, and Ria's never did anything to even change her opinion of him. Dot. It always bothered Ria's when everyone looked at Issei with complete indifference and rumored things about him blackmailing her and the others. But he never did anything to change her opinion about Issei, and all because she couldn't confess to him. Well Valerie, she didn't care that everyone found out about her courtship with Issei, since she put everyone in the same way world in its place. Akeno Himejima was also watching the same video that Ria's was watching on her own phone, just as she found out what happened during the break. And all of that reaffirmed the fact that Valerie is a better girlfriend to Issei than they could be. Would have been if things had been different. She was even there to cheer up and hug Issei when he was crying. For some reason, she feels like she really lost him. And that he wouldn't be happy with her. Obviously the others had their own reactions that were very similar. Accepting the fact that Issei is happier with Valerie than with them. And even, that smile that Issei only gives to Valerie, he never gave them that kind of smile. Since, Issei, from before, unconsciously, saw them with fear. Anyway, when everyone gathered and started on their way to the Haidu residence. The walk was calm and quiet. With Issei again going hand in hand with Valerie and Lefei. And the others going after them, some with jealousy and others with sadness. Anyway, the arrival at the Haidu residence seemed eternal for some, but they finally arrived, and it was already getting dark. Once everyone entered, everyone went to their respective room to change or clean up. Where after almost an hour and when some were returning to the main room. We returned people. Upon hearing that voice familiar to most, everyone went to see the main entrance of the residence and saw. The father, mother. Issei said in disbelief and very happy. Since in fact, it was her parents who had returned from the trip about which she found out that they were sent so as not to arouse her suspicions. And isn't my baby going to give me a welcome hug? Mrs. Haidu asked innocently, extending her arms. As if indicating that she really wants that hug. Issei with a unique smile approached her mother and hugged her in such a unique way, which showed how much he missed her. Even though he was gone almost two months, to Issei it felt like a year that he hasn't seen them. I missed you, mother. Mrs. Haidu understood her son's tone of voice, as well as the way he hugged her. Truly showing that she missed her, something that surprised her but still made her happy, and she hugged her son, caressing her head. Years have passed since the last time she did something similar. And me too, my little baby. Said Mrs. Haidu, kissing Issei's forehead. Dot, no matter how old you are, you will always be my little baby. Hey puppy, and I don't exist. Replied Mr. Haidu, feeling a little out of place. But his beloved wife, without saying anything, took him by the arm and joined him in the family hug, which made Issei happier. The others only watched the family reunion scene with a half smile. Although Valerie felt a little envious when she saw that, internally wishing she wanted to see her mother again and for her to hug her like she used to do. Oh, I see we have new visitors. Said Mrs. Haidu, seeing Valerie, Kuroka, Lefei, Tiamat, Arthur and Bikku in the place. Even Valerie, Office and Lilith were present. Everyone being in casual clothes. Eh, well, the thing is. Issei put on a somewhat nervous smile, she'll have to make up a good excuse. And so, the explanations to the Haidu parents about their new tenants began with the fact that they are friends that they met. Although Kuroka introduced herself as Kaneko's older sister, which surprised both parents who welcomed her with pleasure. Arthur and Lefei introduced themselves as brothers, and that for a time they would not be able to return to their native home, due to family issues. 
the coup introduced himself saying something similar to what Arthur and Lefay said. Well Tiamat said that she was just an independent woman, in addition to revealing her interest in Issei, which surprised them both again and made them happy. Asper only introduced Valerie as her childhood friend, and they also agreed to let her live in her residence. Issei introduced Office and Lilith as sisters under the nicknames. Fis and Lith. Having no choice but to say that they were both adopted after her mother died. Obviously that was a lie, but both Haidu fathers swallowed that story and welcomed both Auroboros sisters with open arms. And when it was Valerie's turn to introduce herself and for her to say where she comes from, she also revealed that. Are you our son's girlfriend yes. Both Haidu parents were speechless upon learning that their son got a girlfriend. But she is not just any one, but a very beautiful one, and she is European because of her features. Oh, my puppy is now a man I'm proud Mr. Haidu started crying tears in a comical way. Oh, my baby is definitely growing. How happy so, there is no problem with this, right? Asked Issei. Of course they can stay puppies Valerie Chan and his friends feel at home, Mr. Haidu declared happily. Oh, I'll make a very special dinner for this moment. Look forward to it. Mrs. Haidu said putting her palms together. E we will take care of her, Mr. and Mrs. Haidu. Valerie said giving a slight bow and being a little nervous. Since he literally just met his in-laws. Oh, don't call us that Valerie Chan. You are our son's girlfriend, so if you want, you can call us, O2 San and Aka San. What Mrs. Haidu said only made Valerie's nervousness grow even more. The Edo. Valerie couldn't argue a word. And when he stopped by to see Issei for a moment, Issei nodded at him with a smile. As if indicating to do what they asked. Daddy, so, thank you, O2 San, Aka San. I, I, I'm glad that someone like you is my daughter in law, Mrs. Haidu said, wrapping Valerie in her sudden embrace that surprised her. Valerie didn't know what to feel about that, but, Seeing the way and affection with which Mrs. Haidu hugged her, for some reason, she reminded him of her mother. The feeling and love was the same. And without knowing why, Valerie closed his eyes, internally enjoying the hug, without knowing or perhaps ignoring the small tears that came out of her eyes running down his cheeks. Dot. The others watched that scene with understanding smiles, especially those who knew that for Valerie, it has been years since he last received a hug and very maternal love. The others only saw that with sadness and understanding. And to think that they could have received that kind of affection if they had confessed to Issei properly. Tiamat only watched what was happening with interest and doing analysis to know what to do. Lefei pouted slightly at that, but she still left her friend in her moment, and the same was with Kuroka. Roswas only saw that with a hand on her chest, feeling her heart beating as if it hurt. Irina just left the place without saying anything, and Ravel just stayed silent watching everything. Things in the Haidu residence had, so to speak, returned to how they were before. Only from now on, things will be different in many areas. Chapter 24 Beginning Reconciliation November had been full of excitement and craziness that happened in a very short amount of time. And now it was December and the end of the second semester at Kuo Academy was approaching. And what awaited our protas was the last part of the second semester. End of semester exams. And well, with that, somehow, our protas managed to finish them. And when they gave everyone their results. Final exams are finally over and how did it go for you, Issei? Mitsuda asked her friend. Issei sighed. There is nothing strange. Well, just normal. Even though I had a good grade in Japanese. Issei had to admit that his exam results are better than before. And for some reason, he was able to put in less effort than before and finish his exams without worries. Issei feels that by stopping being a demon, you have more freedom and time for whatever. His only current obligations were his academy duties, and his training essay didn't have to be a genius to understand that his former job as a demon only made him stressed, but he couldn't complain, until now. In the end, it seems that it was for the best that he stopped being a demon. He doesn't want to spend his time in an office doing paperwork, he'd rather be a warrior on the front line and a normal student at the same time. You're right. It's not a big deal, we end up getting average grades on these kinds of things. You may agree that they are better than failing. But Suda and Motohama were saying those things in his own way. On the other hand. The situation at Kuo Academy has changed in certain perspectives. Since it has been a week since Issei returned to school, and his situation in school has changed a lot. Now everyone no longer saw him as before. He was now just like another student in the crowd who enjoyed his school life. Although Issei more or less understands that he has a certain reputation for dating Kuo's new beauty, Valerie. Oh, this is incredible. Hey Haidu, look at this. Aika called Issei who stopped by to see her. And the chestnut was together with Valerie. Lucigers and got an incredible grade in his exams, being a perfect 100. Really asked Issei without being able to believe it. Well, I consider this almost nothing. Valerie showed the results of his exam, seeing that in fact, he got a perfect 100. They should teach something else that is worth studying. Eh, uh, I agree, Lucigers. 
Ika stated adjusting her glasses. Oh, as for Asia, Zenobia and Irina, they got better grades than the rest. Although I could notice that their academic performance has gone down a bit, hey? What do you mean by that, Kiryu? Motohama asked adjusting her glasses. Simple. All three got 80 on their exams. It's not a bad grade, but as far as I remember, they used to get grades higher than that. But now their academic performance has dropped a little, but nothing serious. What do you think is the reason for that, Haidu? Aika asked squinting. The Edo. Aisei scratched his cheek while thinking about what to say. In addition to taking a brief look at the trio of the church, they saw his results. And they sighed as if in defeat. T maybe. They just didn't get enough sleep or stayed up late. After all, that can happen to anyone when he is pressed for an exam. Ika sighed. Ho, that makes sense. Yes, maybe that's it. At least I got a grade higher than 80, but not yet a 90. Issei showed his results, showing that he got an 88. Oh, at least that's fine. But still. Ika adjusted his glasses, making them shine. It would be a nightmare if your children didn't have intelligence. What Ika said caused Issei and Valerie to blush slightly. Or hey, don't suddenly bring up the topic of children curse even for Valerie, a topic like that is too much Issei claimed, still blushing. Be well, not that it matters. Valerie, somewhat blushing, would run her hand over her belly, caressing it. See, they will grow well if we raise them together with love. Valerie spoke shyly. Curse this damn traitor. You should be executed in front of the fans of this divine beauty. But Suda and Motohama, totally jealous, began to strangle Issei like crazy, while the latter just sighed at that. It's always the same with these two. And all this happened while, a little away from them. I feel like I'm getting further away from my goal. Zenovia looked at her exam sheet with her results. All at an 80. And I sigh sadly at that what's the point of that kind of goal if I still can't get close to it. I have to. Zenovia spoke in a whisper. Malaysia and Irina just sighed at their results. His academic performance has dropped a little, and this proves it. Returning to Issei, Valerie and company. Oh, that's right, Issei. What are you planning to do over winter break? They are getting closer. It's time for you to tell us what you'll do. But Suda and Motohama asked that, a little calmer. Since with the exams over, winter vacation was approaching. So what's your plan? Are we going somewhere together during the holidays? Motohama asked. I don't feel it. I'd really like to hang out with you guys, but it looks like there will be some club activities. Without going any further, I can't give you a clear answer until I ask but you. Most likely there will be winter activities. Issei apologized with an apologetic face. Since even though he will be free more time, that time he had to use to train and be ready to face Clippeth whenever. That was the most important duty entrusted to all members of DXD. So you won't be free during New Year's Eve and the first days of January? I asked now Mitsuda. Um, I'll most likely be free those days, but I'm not sure. Issei gave the vague answer of his while he scratches the back of his head. Odahama sighed. Dot, you seem very busy lately. You rarely have time to hang out with us on your days off. But now it's less than before because you were away for almost two months, idiot Mitsuda claimed, highlighting the obvious, and then sighed. Dot, maybe we should join the photography club. It might be a little late, but maybe we'll be in time for competitions and stuff. Mitsuda's hobby was taking photos. If he joined the photography club he could get good results. Oh yeah, I'm going to change the subject. Have you heard the rumors that people are seeing a lot of Raswis Chan in the bookstore? Motohama said as he tried to remember. Oh, I heard about that. Mitsuda said interested in the topic. You mean the rumors where she keeps sighing while reading books, right? Hm. I heard that she was reading books related to the Bible. Do you know anything about that, Issei? Books related to the Bible? Hm. Issei put a hand to his chin, trying to remember something. I have no idea, I'm sorry. Issei apologized, scratching his head in embarrassment. I don't know what's going on either, so don't ask me. Valerie said, getting his point across. I thought you would know since you are in her club. Mitsuda said. Dot anyway, Roswis Chan's fans are worried about her, so if they can solve her problem, then talk about it with the club members. Yes, I will. Issei nodded in agreement. Speaking of the club, who will be the next president? Ria Senpai won't be able to retire if she doesn't choose anyone, right? Motohama asked, adjusting her glasses. The A, be well. Issei scratched his cheek, thinking about what to say. Dot C when she knows, I'll tell her. That is something she must decide in the end. Her two friends nodded more or less satisfied by her words, and Issei just sighed. Not only did they have the supposed problem of Roswis, she also had the problem of some enmity with her old entourage companions. But the year was ending, and Issei had a feeling that something was going to happen. Already a few hours later, when classes finally ended. All the youths of the Haidu residents were in the training field below the house. Even the Citri clan demons came today to join the training, as they wanted to try something Azazel gave them. Even Sun Wukong and Dulio came to join the training, along with someone else. 
the young people of Grimory and Citri along with the members of Team Valerie were all training in different ways to be prepared for whatever is coming, except Sona who had other pending matters and left Tsubaki in charge of the rest until she called them. Dot. Iku was having a small hand-to-hand -hand combat against Yuritsubasa, the tower of the Citri clan. The girl attacked with punches and kicks that were easily blocked by the Yaokai who only used her hands and not her staff, which was in her back. Iku had to admit that Yura's movements were very skillful, and although her physical strength was not that much, she still had a strength that should not be underestimated. Biku with a daring smile jumped with backflip, then attacked with his Ryuji bang that extended. Yura, seeing how the blunt tip of her cane was coming towards her, quickly raised her left arm and shield with a slight blow, a round shield materialized in Yura's left hand and blocked the attack of Biku's staff, but the impact made her flinch a little. You, if that had hit me, I would have lost. Eh, well, you held up well. Biku removed the cane from her, returning to her original size. Dot, that's one of the artificial sacred gears that the former governor made for you, right? Yura nodded. Dot, yes. Mine is called Twinkle Aegis. We made a pact with a spirit and sealed it in this shield. I can even attack with this. When she said that, flames began to emanate from Yura's shield. Could it be a fire spirit? Ah, it doesn't matter. Dot, shall we continue? I can still continue and I want to be strong. Biku smiled. Dot, let's continue then. But that, they both went back to their business. With Yura throwing her shield like a frisbee and Biku attacking with her extendable staff. Elsewhere in the training ground, Arthur was having his own sword training, along with the Citri Knight, Tomo Maguri. Arthur was using his sword Caliburn, while Tomo was using a sword with a bright and dark blade at the same time. Both swordsmen had a good sword fight, in which Tomo was faster than Arthur, but the latter with his wits could block the girl's attacks without problems, sometimes making him retreat, and he was not being serious. Dot and then they both clash their swords and start a struggle, to start having a little talk. Um, what a peculiar artificial sacred gear. What is it called? Asked Arthur, a little interested. Phew, it's called. Blazer Shining or Darkness Amurai Sword. That's what Azazel Sensei calls him, although I think the name is too long and even a little strange. Tomo said with a bitter smile. Dot, something tells me that that name has to do with his dark past life. But anyway, according to Sensei, this sword is the result of his research after using Kiba Sen's holy demonic sword, as a reference. Oh, interesting. Arthur adjusted his glasses with one hand, while still maintaining the struggle without problems. Dot, let's continue testing what he is capable of, and see if he can rival Kiba's holy demonic sword Udo. And this way you improve your style. Heh, <laughs> having the opportunity to become stronger, training with who, in the words of Hayadu-san, is the strongest swordsman of all, not only in power, but also in strategy, is quite an honor. Arthur smiled. Well, let's continue then. But that, both swordsmen returned to their practical sword combat. On the other hand, Kuroka and Lafay helped Momo, Ria and Gasper with magical training, and giving them various advice on what to do in a fight. Although the main objective of this training was to help Gasper activate that magic again power that I used to defeat the hero faction like it was nothing. But still without many results, but at least Gaspar improved in his offensive magic as did Momo and Ria, who also showed their artificial sacred gears given by Azazel. Momo's was called. A plaza wall. Which took the form of a pair of bracelets on her wrists and gave her the ability to create powerful barriers, capable of withstanding very powerful attacks, and she can even cover her companions with her barriers from afar. And Ria's called. Scouting person which took the form of various masks that Ria can use for espionage and even defense. And Ria can control them even from a distance. Elsewhere, Kaneko was having her own practical hand-to-hand -hand combat together with Ruruko Nomura. And the most detailed thing was that the Citri Pawn had pieces of armor on her legs, which reached up to her waist and said pieces of armor were on her legs. Armor emanated aura. And with that, Kaneko would launch a strong blow that collided with Ruruko's aura-charged kick. You, you are very strong as always, Kaneko said. If it weren't for my artificial sacred gear, Priscillarum Phantom. You would have already defeated me with one or two hits. Haruko gave her opinion that sounded almost like a compliment to her. I recognize it. Kaneko ended the struggle between the two by jumping back just like Haruko. And just when they both went against each other again to attack, Haruko attacked with an aura charged kick, and Kaneko channeled Senjutsu into her fist, but before launching her blow. Kaneko retracted her blow for some reason and cancelled the channeling of Senjutsu in it which caused Raruko to give her a good kick in the abdomen, causing Kaneko to complain about that kick and be sent flying until she fell to the ground. Something that many noticed. Ah, I'm sorry Kaneko said I didn't mean to attack you so hard Raruko quickly apologized, a little scared and nervous. And don't worry. F I was the one who got distracted. Kaneko as best he could knelt on the ground and looked at her fist with regret. Again that annoying feeling and fear. They didn't allow her to use his powers. 
Take a break, both of you, you need it. Tsubaki suggested. And the two first year girls nodded in agreement with her words. Damn, this is not going in the right direction. Kiba said that he witnessed what happened while having a practical sword fight with Zenovia, who seemed more in sync with her movements than usual. Zenovia with her Durandal blocked the attack of Kiba's holy demonic sword and he had a certain reminder, and unknowingly, the aura that Durandal emanated weakened, causing Kiba to block his attack without any problem. Which Kiba noticed and took it a little strange, since that powerful attack from Zenovia with Durandal would have been enough to perhaps destroy or crack his sword. Kiba didn't have to be a genius to understand that Zenovia was now neither in good shape in terms of concentrating. And it's not his fault, he's more or less the same. Only she still maintains her concentration. And he knew that the cause of this was the enmity with Issei. Because although he has returned, nothing is like before, and that causes the Grimory group's fighting spirit to not be like before. Curse. Roswis had her own magic training along with Ria's and Akeno. The three girls attacked with their respective best magic attacks, looking for a way to use less magic power in an attack, but not lose power. According to Roswis, that is possible, but it requires practice, and a lot of it. Although Roswis could notice something strange with Ria's and Akeno, Ria's Hakai no Chikara power of destruction attacks seemed less destructive than she remembers, they were so weak that anyone could counter such attacks. And as for Akeno, just when she charged a holy lightning and was going to throw it, something stopped her in the act of doing that. And when Akeno looked at her hands and closed her fists with a grim expression, Akeno discarded the light and only launched a common but dangerous yellow lightning. Something that Ross was blocked without problems with her improved defensive circles, they didn't even penetrate her defenses a little even with a combined attack, how strange. What's wrong with those two? On the other hand, Valerie was having a training session with one of Grigori's senseis. Penemu, the most beautiful fallen of all and who was in charge of Valerie's good upbringing and training during her years in Grigori. Right at this moment, Valerie with only the wings of the divine dividing taken out, was surrounded by an aura. Bright grayish with slight black details. I was finally able to learn how to use this without problems. It seems that it is another advantage of my blood. Valerie looked at her hand and created a small shiny gray sphere with black details. Heh, <laughs> the fact that you learned to use the light in less than a day was already surprising. The most surprising thing is that you adapted very quickly to that rare combination of light and demonic power. She said the beautiful Grigori Cadre with very dark purple hair and black eyes with a half smile. I know. And with this I will have a better chance of defeating him next time. Valerie sighed as he turned off his demonic light aura. You look better than before, Valerie. Especially in the area that even though you want to kill Razavim, you are calmer than before. Pimu said with a hand on her chin. Valerie sighed with a frown. I still want to kill and make that unfortunate man suffer for what he did, but I won't achieve anything by attacking the crazy woman. I will only get myself killed. So, this is no longer out of revenge, but is a matter of my own justice. Eh, <laughs> that's good. Pimu congratulated her with a smile that is rarely seen on her. Since she always remains serious at all times. And while that was happening, not far from where both women were having their talk, Issei was sitting on the floor with his legs crossed, hands together and eyes closed. All this while a small air of red ore enveloped him. And Sun Wukong was present to him, smoking from his pipe. Well, you already seem to have better control over your own Taki. Said Sun Wukong releasing smoke from his mouth from smoking. Seat yourself. Open your eyes. Issei listened to what Sun Wukong said and opened his eyes to look at his hand and the red Taki aura that surrounded him. It's incredible. I learned a lot from you in a week and it came to this. Issei said with admiration. It seems that this Nekashu taught you a little, and that's good. But if you learn from someone like me, who is the best teacher of Sinjutsu and Yujutsu, you will learn quickly in a short time. To what Sun Wukong said, Issei took it almost as if he were bragging, although he gave it importance. Note that learning Sinjutsu has many requirements Eker Yute Brad since it is about using both the positive and negative energy of the environment in good harmony. If you fail in that balance, this power can corrupt you. But since you don't want to learn something so complex, something as simple as Taki is more than enough for you, since it matches your fighting style. Yeah. I recognize what I'm good at and what I'm not good at. Issei said somewhat seriously. Despite the new body I have and the new energy coursing through my veins, I still suck at magic. But I make up for it with my techniques. If I can't use magic, then I'll use my fists or weapons. Sun Wukong nodded. That's how you talk. Well, from here on out there's not much I can teach you. Your Taki can be improved with training, so you'll be fine on your own. For now, your main goal will be to completely master the Crimson Armor, right? That's right. Issei stated. Are you two done yet? Asked Valerie who arrived where Issei and Sun Wukong were training. For now we will leave it here. What you have to do now is improve your combat styles and so on. 
Sun Wukong smoked from his pipe again and blew smoke from his mouth, did you know that you two are at my level in terms of combat power? Attack you mean? I even if you say that Asun, it's kind of scary that our attacks can't hit you. Issei said in a cold sweat and having a reminder of how he had a practice fight together with Valerie, both of them being Sun Wukong's opponents. And the old monkey was able to dodge them both without problems, they couldn't even graze him even with his final armor. You two know how to increase your powers at the crucial moment of battles. However, both of them expend a lot of energy, and in a real fight that would be disadvantageous, especially in a life or death situation. Said Sun Wukong. Dot. Even though both have learned to control the expenditure of energy and only use everything at the right time, remember that you should not let yourself be provoked by the enemy, since they will take advantage of that, you know. You two are the power that will become the key to DXD's victory against Klepeth. It would be stupid if they didn't have more energy when they need to fight at the crucial moment of the battle. In other words, we need to keep our energy consumption at low levels in our normal form and in the balance breaker, so that we can increase our power only for the actual battle, right? Said Issei analyzing what the old monkey said. That's right. Sun Wukong stated with a half smile. To then smoke his pipe again and. Dot tell me, how are Drag and Albion doing in their search for their sealed powers? When they told us the reason why Issei and I were able to use those powers for a moment in Romania, they said that they would go investigate both sacred gears, together with the hacker Yukas of the past, to try to unlock said abilities that could be useful to us. Valerie said with a hand on his cheek. It seems that we only have to wait for good news from them. To the point where perhaps some gods are afraid to fight you. You're exaggerating Asun. Issei said with a half smile and breaking out in a cold sweat. Well, I let them get on with it. I will come another time. Saying that, Sun Wukong left the place through a transportation circle. So, what now? Asked Issei. Let's see, hmm. Valerie became thoughtful, until. Hey, silly couple. Upon hearing that voice, Issei and Valerie saw how Azazel had arrived at the place, and Penemu was following him. I see you've finished your part for today, right? You could say. Valerie shrugged his shoulders as he said that. What brings you here, Sensei? Issei asked with doubt. Simple. I brought something for you too that can help you in future battles. What Azazel said made Issei and Valerie wonder what he brought. Do you remember when you told me about the research that Euclid did with of the gems in your armor? And that he asks you for one of the gems of your armor too, just like your Valerie. Oh yeah. I remember. Issei nodded. I also remember that. Said Valerie. Well, that helped me a lot in my research to even improve my dragon type artificial sacred gears. And I brought you this. Azazel would take out a couple of objects from his bag. They were two gems, one green and one blue dot, this is, so to speak, accessories for his sacred gears. Let your sacred gears absorb these gems and you will know what to do. Issei and Valerie looked at each other for a moment and then said dot ok. And so they both took their respective gem. Issei the green one and Valerie the blue one. Issei made the boosted gear appear and placed the gem that Azazel gave him on top of the gauntlet gem. Causing both gems to shine upon mere contact. And with some hesitation, Issei released the gem in his hand and it turned into light, which joined the gem of the boosted gear. Valerie, for his part, would make a white gauntlet with a blue gem appear on his right arm. And did the same as Issei, causing the same result with the gem Azazel gave him being absorbed into his gauntlet. And then. Oh, this is interesting. And to think that this crow came up with something so incredible. The Drake, Albion San. Are they back? Asked Issei, a little surprised to hear both. That's how it is. When we heard that Azazel brought some accessories for both sacred gears, we didn't hesitate to come check it out. Drake responded to his partner's question. And then what is the supposed improvement that we receive? Valerie asked. We take care of that. But at the same time it is necessary that both raise their respective hands with their gloves and imagine that they are holding a sword. Albion suggested. Hey. So that. Just do it. Trust us. It was the only thing Drake said to Issei's question. And with no other option, Issei and Valerie heeded the request of their dragons and raised their hands as they both requested. Instantly, there was a red and white glow coming from their gauntlets respectively. And when the glow dissipated. To the surprise of Issei and Valerie, they both had a sword each in their hands. Issei's was a red blade with a gold handle and small green gems on it. Valerie's was a white blade with a gold handle and small blue gems on it. This is. Valerie was amazed at what she saw. That's something similar to Euclid's sword boosted, which Issei told me about. Azazel said, drawing the attention of Issei and Valerie. Dot, I thought it would be useful to give you extra weapons, and that's why I did this. And there doesn't seem to be a problem with that, right, Dragon Albion? So it seems Azazel. What you gave Valerie is now completely linked to the Divine Dividing Array. Which now recognizes that sword as an ability or something extra of it. The same applies with the boosted gear. Drag stated look on the bright side partner. 
Now you can practice the two sword style just in case. Ah, you're right. I accept to say what Drake said. By the way, try to summon another similar sword in your other hand. Just in case you were wondering. As Azazel said, Valerie would make another gauntlet appear, now on his left arm. And after a few seconds, another sword equal to the one he had in his right hand materialized. Dot, it seems to work after all. Incredible. Valerie looked with admiration at the two white swords of hers. Without a doubt, they can be useful. All said talk continued, a very bright light was present in the place, drawing the attention of perhaps everyone. And when they looked towards the source, they saw Dulio who was flying in the air with his ten angel wings spread. And Dulio had a large amount of fire in his right hand while in his left, he had a sharp spear of ice. And there was a thunder cloud above his head that was creating lightning bolts. Everyone knew that those clouds in the air were artificial clouds created by Dulio using the power of his longinus. Zenith Tempest. Which can control the world's climate and all the elemental attributes that existed in nature. So he could even create artificial clouds in places where there was no sky, just like now. And the one in front of Dulio was Saji, who was wearing a black sweater and was engulfed in black flames as he faced Dulio. Saji's goal in training with Dulio or anyone in the place was for the purpose to reach his balance breaker. Sona had suggested that he could reach balance breaker if he trained with Longinus holders or the Gremory group. So everyone was cooperating with him. But finally, Dulio attacked mercilessly with different attributes such as fire, ice, water, air and lightning that extinguished Saji's black flames and made him fall to the ground. It was Dulio's victory and Saji had lost all hope. So it had become a one-sided fight where he had to defend himself. Saji's abilities could be used in different ways, such as using his line, which had various effects, while the black flames could be used for direct attacks and to create a wall of fire that nullified enemy attacks. So Dulio would dodge or push away those attacks and stop Saji's movements. And even if neither of them were in their balance breaker state, the difference between the two was evident. Do you know? I heard that the Joker had a calm personality, so he early starts attacking. If he planned to do so, I'm sure he could make spectacular attacks. Azazel gave his opinion on this, and the others had to agree with him. Maybe that's the Joker's training. I'm sure he's training himself by putting restraints on himself. I heard that he is good at attacking in wide areas, but that he is not good with close range attacks, so I guess he wants to overcome that. Pimu also gave his opinion on this. Man, without a doubt I lost that one. Saji said, stretching a little to calm the certain pain. Dot, it is too early to face the most powerful attacks of the Holy Warrior. Take Senpai, you need it. Ruruko handed Saji a bottle of water. And don't forget to wipe off your sweat, Jen Chan. Momo threw the aforementioned a small towel that he took with one hand. Thank you very much, Hanakai-san, Namura-san. Thanks Saji. Tsubaki had a small magical communication circle appear in her ear, and she nodded to whoever made the call. Dot, I understand. Listen everyone, Kaichu says that's all for today. And now he needs some help with school, so we're leaving right now. Hi all the members of Citri responded to what their Fuku Kaichu said. Everyone assumed they were talking about the rating game school that Sona had built and that anyone could enroll in. They hadn't taken any students yet, but there would be an open day for parents who were interested in taking their children to school from all over the underworld. It seemed like people were still arriving every day, so the Citri group I was having a hard time because of student council duties. We will also go there another time. I would like to see how things are going there so we can help them. Issei said with a smile. Yeah, that would be a big help. Saji smiled hearing that dot man, we can't handle everything since these are new things for all of us. Also, Chief Sererg was coming to help us starting today, and we called some teachers to give us a demonstration. Many were happy for the almost fulfilled dream of the Citri group. But that showed the number of kids who couldn't enroll in normal schools and how many wanted to participate in the raiding games in the future. Ordinary demons had practically no chance of making a career in the raiding games. That was the situation in the underworld and its reality. It had become an event that favored those with status and in which only some high-class demons could participate. Alright then. We'll see each other next time. Tsubaki gave a slight bow, saying goodbye to everyone. And just like that, all the Citri members disappeared from the place in a transportation circle. Then, Dulio descended from the air. He took a donut from his pocket and took a bite. Oh yes, his hobby was walking while he ate. The gourmet who had traveled the world. I can't live without a source of sugar. The Joker really leads a quiet life. Even if he had that attitude, he was the young leader of DXD. Issei would look at the others who continued their respective training for a while longer. And it was there that he could notice the lack of strength and will of the Grimory group. Which I miss a little, although he could notice something else. And it was on Zenobia's sword Durandal, since. Ah, Azazel Sensei. What happened to the Excaliburs that were used as covers for Durandal? Oh, I see you noticed. Well, it turns out that. 
Azazel put a hand to his chin. When Arthur gave us the remains of the Excalibur ruler sword, the Vatican recreated the sword with alchemy. And they asked for the other Excaliburs that Zenobia had to test if they could recreate the true Excalibur and perhaps find a wielder for it. Therefore, but she still finds it difficult without a doubt. I see. Issei appreciated what Azazel said. Well, I leave you to your snotty problems. Sayonara. Azazel scratching the back of his neck left the place through a transportation circle together with Penemu. Issei, I don't like something about all this. The aforementioned went to see Valerie with some doubt. What do you mean by that? Simple. Look at Rhea's Gremory and his servants, they are very unbalanced or out of their minds. At what Valerie said, Issei looked even more intently at his former group mates. Leaving aside the Valkyrie, along with Gaspar Vladi and Kibuyudo, the others are not doing well. For example, Kuroka's sister is now training without her Nekamata powers. Issei could see that, indeed, Kaneko went out of his Nekamata mode and was just punching and kicking the punching bags in the place. How strange. Why would she do it? Another example is Akeno Himejima. She no longer uses the light combined with the lightning. Both young people saw that, in effect, Akeno stopped using the light and only launched her normal powerful rays without the power of the light. She stopped using holy lightning dot, and Rhea's Gremory's attacks are too poor, I bet even Sona Citri would beat her without problems. Issei could notice that Rhea's Hakai no Chikara power of destruction attacks did less destruction than before, to the point that they couldn't even crack Roswas's defensive circles. With Zenobia there weren't as many problems, since she must have dominated Durandal, although it was obvious that she was no longer training with enthusiasm and sometimes seemed to get distracted. And Asia for now was trying to improve her magic. If they continue with such a mediocre level, it could cost them their lives when we have to fight Klepeth. Issei had to agree with what Valerie said. His former groupmates, or at least some of them, were not well, and he knew why. Issei sighed. I think he should do something to make things right with everyone, but how do I do it? I can't even look at their faces without remembering that night. Only with Kiba, Gaspar and Roswas everything is fine. Although sometimes Kiba is a little uncomfortable in front of me, and I already have an idea why. You should try to talk privately with one of them somehow. Valerie put her hand on Issei's shoulder, making him see her. Dot. I have even seen him from afar on some occasions. Regret is shown in his expressions, and the result of that is in his current strength. You were the heart of that group, the one who held it together. And even if you are here, they don't seem to have recovered their spirit. Issei sighed. I know, but. With what I told them that day, they must all be hurt, although they know how to hide it, I can see that they are definitely wrong. I don't know what to do. He only talks to them. If there is an opportunity to talk to one of them alone, take advantage of that. Valerie sighed. And whatever happens after that, if you have questions or anything else, come and talk to me, okay? Okay. Issei nodded in agreement. He knew that maybe it was time. Time to try to formalize and repair the ties that had been broken. It was already night that same day. All the residents of the house had had a quiet dinner without much discomfort. And right now, Issei was coming out of the bathroom that was located in the first basement of the residence, and he had his towel around his neck and was wearing his night clothes. Issei decided to take the long route while thinking about several things. Where the only thing he thought about was what happened in today's training and the low fighting spirit of his former teammates. Issei knew that he had to do something, since the low esteem could cost Rias and his life. Others when it comes to fighting and, unfortunately, they could only become a hindrance instead of a help. Although Issei did not regret his decision to have gone with Valerie, he knew that this decision lowered the self-esteem of his former classmates. Cluster. He had to do something, so. But the sigh, Issei decided to make a quick detour to be sure of one thing. Thus going to the fourth floor of the residence. Where upon arriving, Issei decided to go to Akeno's room first, since something told him that he should start with her first. And Issei knew that although Akeno was tough, strong and sadistic on the outside, on the inside, she is very fragile to the point where it is easy to break her spirit. That's why he decided to start with her first. Once Issei reached the door to Akeno's room, he began to mentally debate whether to knock or enter without knocking. Thus deciding to first knock for a moment but, nothing. He did not receive a response from the other side. Seeing that, Issei put his ear to the door, trying to listen from the other side, but nothing either. And sighing a little, Issei opened the door to the room carefully without trying to make noise. To Akeno-san. Taking a look at the room, Issei could see that everything was arranged and. That Akeno was lying on her bed, apparently sleeping, and Issei sighed at that thought, I guess I'll leave it at that for today. And just when Issei was about to leave, he could hear and see how Akeno started to move in the bed while he was sleeping. And from the expression on his sleeping face, Issei could guess that he was having a bad dream. So without hesitation, Issei entered Akeno's room and gently closed the door without making a sound. And as he approached the bed in the room, Issei could see how even Akeno seemed to sweat a little as she continued with that evil. 
dream, and then. And no. Please. Go away. Akeno raised her hand while she was still asleep while he said that, as if he was trying to push someone away. And it's not true. I don't. Dot. Akeno san. Issei saw a little sadly how Akeno seemed to fight against that nightmare. And without thinking, she sat on a chair next to the bed and took Akeno's hand with her left hand. Dot, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you are suffering this way even because of me, all because of my indecision of not being able to love without fear of rejection. Issei laughed sadly. Dot. Even after everything, I still think I don't deserve them, neither you nor Valerie, but. I want to try and not seclude myself anymore. And I don't want anyone to suffer, especially you, Akeno. Issei called her by her name without honorific, now holding Akeno's hand with his two hands with his head down. Not knowing that his words seemed to have calmed Akeno still asleep, and then. Eyes. Say. Kun. Akeno slowly opened her eyes, seeing that next to his bed, Issei was sitting holding his hand with his head bowed. And the boy looked up to see her with a look of sadness and understanding. Hello, Akeno-san. I'm sorry if I woke you up. Akeno felt like he wanted to cry when he saw how Issei looked at her with concern on her face. He never thought he would see that expression again. Akeno sobbed why did you come dot Issei kun? I asked, avoiding wanting to cry. Issei sighed dot just. I want to talk a little about what happened during training. Issei settled further into his seat and released Akeno's hand. In order to begin to tell him what he discovered was happening to everyone. Akeno was obviously speechless at that and lowered her head somewhat sadly upon hearing that dot so what happened there? Why are you secluding yourself again, Akeno-san? Akeno, still looking down, sat on the edge of his bed and said dot tell me, Issei-kun, do you hate me, both as a person and as a fallen angel? Phew why are you asking me that? Ask Issei having a bad feeling dot if you are like this because of what I told you the day I came back, that doesn't mean I hate you. So why were you avoiding me the most of all? Even before what happened that night. Akeno trembled a little as he said that, as if he couldn't hold something back for long. I already told you the reason why I was afraid to approach you. But that doesn't mean that. Just look at me Akeno shouted, finally not being able to contain what he had in store as he began to cry. And he spread his wings of the fallen dot sniff. Look at me and tell me if I don't remind you of someone. Issei, a little doubtful and at the same time surprised that Akeno had yelled at him, he began to look at her more intently. And just by seeing her, he couldn't help but be a little surprised at that, since. Black hair loose like the night itself. Violet eyes and. Fallen angel wings. Just seeing that, Issei more or less understood what Akeno meant by him being avoiding her more than the rest even before that night. Dot. Akeno-san, I. You don't have to say it. Akeno interrupted Issei, once again having her gaze down as he sobbed. Dot, that's why you avoided me the most of all, right? Even after everything we went through, even when you told me that you didn't hate me for being a fallen angel, because that doesn't define who I am, you. Sob. Dot, you were avoiding me more than necessary because you saw through me to that damn crow. When I realized that, Ayakeno with her trembling hand grabbed one of her wings and squeezed them furiously, removing several feathers. Dot, in the end. As long as this is in part, you will avoid me, right? But then. Why are you trying to be nice to me again, you idiot Akeno shouted full of tears and facing Issei with her eyes, without being upset, just showing her sadness. I'm sorry. Issei said with a sad expression when he saw that, at the end of everything, she made Akeno cry and hate her blood again, but this time with a different reason. Dot, there were times when she wished she had been better than before and so. Preventing even you from secluding yourself. Issei would look Akeno straight in her eyes. Dot. I always believed that my efforts to find someone who could love me equally were in vain. Despite the good coexistence I had with all of them and that I loved them without even being able to say it, I was afraid to confess or take a step beyond what should be, since I didn't want you to look at me badly. And unconsciously, without knowing the reason why, I refused to love and accepted it, thinking that it was enough to just be friends. I I was weak, so pathetically weak to the point where I couldn't forget Rainer. Despite what she did, and even though she is no longer here, she continued to be a part of me, ruling who I am, making me it would also seclude me. Issei Kun. When I realized that and came to the conclusions that you really loved me, I felt a little happy knowing that my efforts to find someone who loves me equally were not in vain. But what disappointed me knowing that, none of you claimed to love me. When saying that, Issei sighed, putting his hands together. Dot, but leaving all that aside. I don't come to talk about me, but about you, Akeno-san. Tell me, what made you fall in love with me? And be sincere with what you say, in the long run if necessary. Hearing that, Akeno lowered her head a little and placed her hand on her heart, listening to it beat, as if telling her what she should say. And I sigh for a moment, so I can start talking. At first it wasn't like that. As you should know, I was very distrustful of men just as I hated my father for no reason. And I only got along well with those I trusted. 
when you came to the group, I decided to treat you like another companion, and even though I heard everything about you and what you did, I could see that you were much more than that pervert that everyone they talked. You worry about others and pray for the good of everyone, and you put the lives of others as first priority before your own. Akeno closed her eyes for a moment, then opened them and continued. When it was the battle against Phoenix, I admired the will you had to continue fighting even when injured and when you defeated Razor in the rematch. Well, you could say that what I felt on that occasion was more admiration than anything else, and I like to use it to annoy you and Rias. When the battle against Kakabiel was in he revealed that my father was Barakiel, I was afraid of that you hated me, since in the end, the Fallen have caused you more problems than any other being, especially her. Issei could understand that Akeno was talking about Raynor in the last part by highlighting the word her. When I revealed to you that I was half-fallen and I expected you to hate me for being so, I was happy to see that you accepted me as such, that it didn't matter what species I was, since I was just me and what I was didn't define me. It was at that moment when that feeling of love was born in me that no one else made me feel. When I moved into your house along with the others, I wanted to do everything possible so that you would notice what I felt, but despite that, I still didn't accept my fallen side. And it was in the game against Sona Kaichu that I decided to use it because you were there to cheer me up, but I still didn't fully accept that side of me, I just used it knowing that it could help those who helped me. Matter with that power. And when what happened with Loki and that my father was present, it helped me a lot that you were there for me and used that power in me that made me see that I was making myself live that lie that I hated. To my father, when I really missed him. The Keno sighed with a sad smile and looked to say directly in the eyes. When I was finally able to overcome that thanks to you, that made my love for you greater than before, but. Akeno lowered her head slightly. I was stupid. Even though I was fighting for your love, I agreed that Rhea should be the first, and that's why I supported her, instead of supporting you and telling you what I felt. And after what happened that night, it took me a while to realize that I was stupid for waiting too long. And I prayed every night that I would see you again and be able to tell you what I felt. And when what happened with those creatures attacking the underworld and that the hero faction proved that you had died, I felt empty, like lifeless. Dot my mind went blank. And I kept remembering the Issei Kun that was in my memories and escaping reality. I thought I was having a horrible nightmare. I wanted to get out of it and return to reality, fearing that a little. I was afraid to think that if that was a dream, I was also afraid to think that you were just a product of that dream. But it wasn't like that, it was the harsh and horrible reality, but... When I saw the recording that Grafi Asama showed us of you appearing on the battlefield, I felt like I was more or less myself again, I just needed to see you again and tell you what I felt, but. Well, you already know the rest. Issei was silent for a moment, processing everything Akeno said. She already understood a lot, only the conclusion was missing. Issei sighed. So, even after everything that happened, how do you feel about me currently? Akeno smiled in her own way. You have helped me a lot since you arrived, even though I didn't ask you for it. Thanks to your support I was able to accept that part of me that I hated so much. That's why. Issei. Ayakeno turned a little red at Issei's gaze, but she prepared herself for what was coming. Whatever happens, he will accept it. Dot. I know that your priorities are Valerie and I am happy for you, for finally being happy with it someone who will always be by your side. But at least I want you to know this. I love you. Those words left to say speechless. Dot. I know it sounds very selfish of me, and I will understand if I don't deserve it, but at least I wanted to tell you this. And if you give me the opportunity to be by your side, I wouldn't mind being the third, the fourth, the fifth. Or the last. I just want to know if I can be by your side. Duakeno. Issei called her again by her name without her honorific, surprising the girl who was not expecting that again. And Issei knew that she had to say something, she had to do it. And then, with a smile dot of course it will be like that. Just give me some time and I will answer you properly. Yes yes. Akeno nodded happily and crying a little, I don't reject her, she said it would be like this just a little time and. It's worth it. It can wait. For now, I need you to do your best in the current situation, do you understand? Akeno nodded a little determinedly to what Issei said. Dot, I'm sorry to force you to do something like try hard, knowing that it's partly my fault that you ended up the way you were. No, I understand. Akeno shook her head at what Issei said. Dot, Even in the shape I was in, I understood that we were all at a fairly mediocre level that could cost us our lives when it came to fighting. I tried to remain firm in the situation because I know that it is important, even being in shape. In which I was. But unconsciously, I stopped using that power. I'm a fool. No. You're not. Akeno walked over to see Issei with some surprise on her face. Dot, we all make mistakes, and we do our best to remedy them. No one is strong-minded, we are all mentally weak, but it is only up to us to overcome that and be better than before. Akeno. Issei would sit at the Akeno's side on the edge of the bed and put his hand on her shoulder. At times like this, others will need you when it comes to fighting. 
I will try to do my part in mending our broken ties, but that will take time. And until that happens, the Gremory group needs at least to his queen. If his king is unable to do anything at the moment, then you, who are the queen and second in command, must take the lead and lead the group as you should. Do you understand? Yes Akeno nodded determinedly to what Issei said. And feeling that her spirit had sunk before, she was recovering. Thank you for everything, Issei. And also. Akeno unexpectedly hugged Issei, placing her head on her chest, and the boy surrounded her with his arms. Thank you for not abandoning me, and for accepting me, again. I will cheer you up whenever necessary. You can be sure of that. Issei tightened his embrace even more and placed her head on Akeno's. She internally admitted that she missed this feeling. Please, let's stay like this for a while longer. I want to make sure that this is not a dream. Issei could notice Akeno's somewhat fearful tone that this is a dream, and she already knows what to do. Dot. I will stay until you are safe and can sleep peacefully. Thank you. Things won't be easy, but there is still the possibility that those previously broken ties will be repaired again and be stronger than before. But only time will tell. Meanwhile, in Issei's room. Someone had knocked on the door of said room. Valerie would get up to see if it was Issei, since as crazy as it sounds, she feels a little strange trying to sleep without Issei by her side, as if sleeping has become a habit for her to the point where she can't sleep without him by her side. Ah, leaving that aside. Once Valerie opened the door, he was surprised to see the person he had knocked on. And was. You. You're Roswis, right? The aforementioned nodded to Valerie's question. Plus Roswis was wearing his night clothes what's on offer for you. I would like to talk to you for a moment, Valerie Lucifer. Roswis sounded a little nervous in what she was saying, but she seemed determined. Just call me Valerie. And anyway, what do you want to talk about? Valerie asked, crossing his arms without any indifference. You see. In a couple of days someone important will come to this house for certain matters that will be discussed later. And I wanted to ask you a favor, at least until that person leaves. And which one would it be? Valerie asked with a raised eyebrow. And so Roswis would explain the reasons for her favor, leaving Valerie speechless for a moment. Who after the seconds agreed according to Roswis's request. Unique moments and more are already about to happen. After 25 presentations, appointment and discoveries, it was already a new day at the Haidu residence, a couple of days after the young people were given their results for their end of semester exams, and Issei had mended a relationship with Akeno. Since yesterday, Riaz and the others could notice that Akeno looked normal as before, and didn't seem to have any worries in his being, as if a great burden that he had had finally been lifted from him. And that was more evident in how throughout the day yesterday, Akeno was putting more effort than before into training, and was using her holy lightning again, and she also seemed to chat about some things with Issei, and they both treated each other well, now without any discomfort. Dot. The girls didn't know how, but something told them that maybe Akeno and Issei settled their differences. Because when Akeno gave Issei a hug that showed more of her gratitude for everything he did for her than anything else, Issei reciprocated without a doubt. And that made some of them a little jealous and others a little sad to think that Akeno was able to win over Issei again, although the reality was more than another, but her assumption was not far from reality. Obviously Issei told Valerie about her talk with Akeno that night when she told him to try to fix things with him. And Valerie congratulated him on her progress, since whatever happens next, she will talk to Akeno. Since Issei even told him about Akeno's confession to him. Valerie seriously thought that if this continues like this, he should start setting rules in this harem matter. He already had in mind three certain girls who seemed to have feelings for Issei, and that alone was enough for Valerie to reluctantly accept this harem thing, but it's not like he gave them all a free pass, even those who are her friends. But now with Issei managing to fix things with Akeno, there is the possibility that not only her, but also the others who did not value her feelings as they should, fix their differences, and that perhaps on one day they want to be something more than friends and colleagues. Ah, let's move on to another matter. All day yesterday, Issei had noticed how Oswis was staring at him from a distance. And when he passed by to see her, she would look away, avoiding him, pretending that she was not seeing him. And with all that. Today, all the tenants of the Haidu residence, with the exception of Issei's parents, after training today in the afternoon. Everyone began to prepare everything necessary in the room VIP of the residence, since according to Ria's, they are going to welcome an unexpected visitor. Obviously all the tenants and visitors took a quick bath to be presentable for this visitor. Issei with the help of Arthur, Kiba, Zenovia and Arena, cleaned the VIP room properly. Asia, Ravel and Lafay were in charge of preparing something to eat along with tea. Obviously Office and Lilith tried the delicious homemade cookies that Asia, Ravel and Lafay made. Even Karoka, who was as relaxed and lazy as usual, tried the homemade cookies. And once most of the preparations for their visitor were finished, those who were in charge of cleaning, went to rest a little in the living room on the first floor. Our visitor has arrived. So let's go to the teleportation room in the underground. 
With Akeno's call, everyone headed to the underground to welcome their visitor. And once they arrived at the teleportation room in the underground. They waited almost a minute until the floor of the teleportation room began to show a magic circle with Nordic runes that glowed. For those who don't know, our current guest is Roswiss's grandmother. What Rhea said caused some to be surprised by what they heard, with the exception of Valerie who already knew about it, thanks to Roswiss that night. I heard that she is famous in Asgard as a talented magic user. Issei was surprised to hear that and looked at Roswiss, who was making a complicated face. Issei. The aforementioned stopped by to see Valerie who was somewhat serious. Cooperate with Roswiss and in everything she says while his grandmother is here. This is important to her. Issei was a little confused at what Valerie said, but she nodded in agreement with some hesitation. Then, the glow of the teleportation circle grew stronger and then disappeared. The one who appeared in that place was a woman wearing a dark blue robe. She had a fearless look and seemed to be the same height as Roswiss. She had a body to envy and a slim figure. In addition, she had very long silver hair tied in a large ponytail, and her face had fine features, a beauty without a doubt. Obviously some or many were surprised by the woman's appearance, she still looked quite young but more mature. Even Issei couldn't help but think that this woman has a small relationship with Roswiss, and their auras were similar, indicating that they are family. Incredible, they look a bit alike. Issei said in a whisper. Oh, well. With this we can say that the young Valkyrie will be a good gilf in the future. Drake blurted out his comment, a little surprised and wanting to make fun of Issei, who grunted a little at that. Hello everyone. My name is Gonder. And I'm Roswiss's grandmother. Nice to meet you. The woman now identified as Gonder, gave a slight bow. Thank you for taking care of my granddaughter all this time. Gonder stopped by to see Roswiss, who looked away a little nervously. She didn't welcome him with a hug, but she wasn't clearly upset either. With that, everyone guided Gonder to the VIP room of the residence. The older Valkyrie showed a good taste for the homemade cookies and tea they had prepared for this meeting. And after they finished introducing themselves. So Gonder san will participate in the magical assembly that will be held in the Agar's territory of the underworld, huh? Rhea said a little surprised, in order to begin to explain this whole matter. Apparently, skilled magicians were going to meet in a city in Agar's territory to discuss topics related to magic. Since there were those who were going to go to the underworld without being demons, it showed how powerful these magic users were. Since most of our protas are demons and other members of other races, they had the support of the governor of the fallen angels and the archangel of heaven, which allowed them to go to various places freely, but that was an exception. A mere human or a normal wizard could not go to the world of demons, the world of fallen angels or heaven. For a normal person, it was a supernatural world that surpassed his understanding. A supernatural territory. And the topic that the wizards were going to be discussing was about rare spells, ancient magic, and forbidden spells. Even the researchers from the Demon Research Institute were going to be there, so it was a very rare occasion. That's something we can't tell anyone, but currently there have been an increase in cases where magic users disappear, magicians who knew forbidden spells and ancient magic. Rias informed everyone, where some were somewhat thoughtful about all this. Maybe it was related to that unfortunate Rizavim. So maybe they are being pushed to do terrorism. When Zenovia asked Rias, she didn't clearly say yes, but she also didn't say no. Whether the Forsaken Mages are acting on their own or if the Cow's Brigade is behind this. In either case, there is a surge of opinions among the mages who want to meet and exchange opinions. Gondor, who was silent until now, spoke slowly. There is also information that has not been revealed to the public, but for this meeting, we are thinking about sealing each other's research subjects, in other words, we are going to seal the spells that each one specializes in. So. Are you planning to get rid of your magic? Gondor denied Ravel's question. Basically it's better to seal it until this problem has been resolved, before some person we don't know uses the power that we spend our lives practicing and improving. Some had to agree with Gondor. Since they surely wouldn't want his powers to be misused. And if that happened and caused problems for other people, then they were going to be responsible for that. And things like forbidden spells had dangerous consequences, so there were spells that were very dangerous if they were cast. I heard that the Fallen Angels organization, Grigori, was working on anti-magic measures. So for these problems that are happening, we are going to have to depend on the fallen angels to seal our powers. Everyone knew about the anti-magic research created by Grigori that Gondor mentioned. Although Valerie thought of one of Grigori's severe leaders who looked like something out of a takusatsu. She still remembers that he seemed to want to use her for his crazy investigations. For Valerie, Cadre Armrose and researcher of the anti-magic is the second member of Grigori, who has caused him the most problems in a fight. Tobio was the only one who could face Valerie in his juggernaut drive back then, but he couldn't beat her. Although Valerie still thinks Armrose is more problematic than Tobio. As he clasped his hands, Gondor continued speaking, dot even if we sealed it ourselves, they would be able to break the seal if they kidnapped and hypnotized us. 
Even if we asked other wizards to seal our power, they could still steal our power. If that were the case, the Fallen Angels Research Institute is a good choice that we could trust. Some couldn't help but think that Azazel had a good reputation. Well, they had been under the strong impression that they were the evil organization of the Three Biblical Factions Alliance. But now, they wanted peace and were sharing their techniques with everyone. They had even promised the vampires that they would cooperate in the investigation of Sacred Gears. He was sure that they had earned the trust of many through those actions. He sure thought it was something incredible that they had achieved it in such a short time. So before they seal our powers, we decided to exchange opinions. There are magicians who refuse to participate in the meeting. But it is clear that they value the discussion that will take place there. I also agreed to participate. And I also received an invitation from Sona Citri. As Gondor said, everyone understood that this connected her with the role of teacher for Sona's school that was built in the underworld. After all, they had received the explanation from her of what she was going to be doing. Gondor was going to stay in the city for several days and was going to go to the underworld on the day when the young people didn't have school. That was possible since that day coincided with the meeting of magicians. Everyone in the room understood the reason for her visit. After that, the discussion became more relaxed. Gondor-san is also a Valkyrie, Issei Sama. Her name even appears in the stories of Norse mythology. Issei was a little surprised at what Lefei said. Since if she remembers correctly, she had not researched much about those of Norse mythology, she knows about some gods and some of the mythical creatures of hers. But I don't do much research on the Valkyries apart from the fact that she knows that they are warriors of Valhalla and that obviously the Valkyries are only women. In addition, the Valkyries are always the first to go to the front when it comes to fighting before the other male soldiers. Oh, then I guess one of the reasons that made Roswissan become a Valkyrie is that she was influenced by her grandmother, or am I wrong? Gondor shrugged, sighing at Issei's question. I told her many times that she was not suitable to do that since she was very clumsy. Gondor said with a somewhat harsh tone. And Roswiss blushed with embarrassment and looked away a little. Gondor put his cup of tea on the table and then spoke to Roswiss. Rose, there's only one reason she came here. You know the reason, right? Gondor would go to see all the young people in the room, especially the boys. There are only like five men in this room. So which one of them is the person you told me about? Roswiss, a little nervous but armed with courage, stands up from her seat and sits next to Issei, which makes him a little strange as it does some. Roswiss would exchange glances with Valerie, and the latter would look at her. He nodded to what she asked. With that, Roswiss would take a breath and speak. He is he. Her name is Haidu Issei. Saying that, Roswiss would put her hand on Issei's, holding it to her and some of hers bewilderment. And he is my boyfriend. Given what Roswiss said, an uncomfortable silence was created in the room, and many, including Issei himself, were in shock at what they had heard. Issei, a little doubtful and somewhat scared, would go to see Valerie, who with his gaze I tell him to continue the game. Plus he remembered that this seemed to be important to Roswiss, so he should support her. On her side. Rose, you left your home, became a demon, and started working as a teacher in this human world of your own free will. You really are a bad granddaughter for making me worry so much. Ugh. That's... Roswiss couldn't argue with her grandmother's words. I must say that you have changed the way you lived without even discussing it with me. Saying that, Gondor realized that his pitch was getting higher, so he only gave a light cough. Well, that should be enough. I was also told that Odin Sama forgave you for abandoning him, so I don't blame you for that. Be that old man. Roswiss sounded somewhat irritated upon hearing that. And to think that's what that old man said, when in reality. It was that decrepit old man who left his bodyguard behind the chief god of the Norse, needed to repent of his mistake. I'm worried about you. Even if you are good at studies and magic, you are clumsy and have a forgetful mind. Gondor spoke again. Dot, so I'm worried about whether you can take on the role of a teacher in a country as far away as this without causing problems. That's why I always told my granddaughter that I would feel safer if she had a boyfriend. So she told me that she had one. Just by hearing that, Issei completely understood the situation and why Roswiss said that he was her boyfriend, and if she is not mistaken, Valerie seems to be aware of that too, and that is why she allowed him to play along. Something tells her that Roswiss talked to Valerie about this and convinced her to let Issei pretend to be her boyfriend. But what surprises him is that Valerie has accepted. While the others were trying to process this whole thing. However, as far as I remember. Gondor narrowed his eyes, looking analytically at Issei. You are the Seker Uite, right? Yes, yes. Issei nodded. I had heard that you joined the terrorists until recently, or am I wrong? What Gondor said left everyone speechless and made Issei and Roswiss nervous. However, I learned from certain rumors and confirmed reports that the reason for this is because the Seker Uite was sent as an infiltrator in the Cow's Brigade to destroy the terrorist organization from within, along with the help of the current hacker Yuaku and her team. 
And although this secret operation worked and they completely eliminated two of the Cow's Brigade factions, they came back worse than ever, and something big is going to be unleashed. Gondor sighed. Despite their secret actions that were beneficial so to speak, I understand that they now have the Sekiruite under surveillance and do not give him as much freedom as before. In other words, he is still treated like a criminal who is only being given the benefit of the doubt. Since that information about his alleged betrayal was revealed by the terrorists, and he did not mention that operation until a couple of weeks ago. Everyone was already informed of that. According to Azazel, he sent Valerie from the beginning to infiltrate the cow's brigade and keep them informed of what they were planning. In the case of Issei, a story had to be invented that was quite believable by everyone, which Gondor just mentioned with Issei also being an infiltrator, just as extra help despite the risks that that entailed. Of course that it was just a lie, since the real reason is something else that only the main leaders and very few knew. And even with that, I found out about his former fame in the underworld and that he stopped being a demon. And because what happened with said operation was not revealed, the formerly called Sekiruite Opai Dragon lost all his fame and others for which he was recognized. So with that. Gondor would put his elbows on the table and put his hands together with his eyes half closed. I just see that you are committing yourself to someone who doesn't seem to have any bright future. But the older Valkyrie said only caused another awkward silence in the place. Issei felt a little offended by that, but he didn't deny it, since it was true and he doesn't care about that. Let those naive people think what they want, they really don't know anything. Some were slightly annoyed to hear that even Gondor seems to agree that Issei is now someone without a bright future, although it didn't seem like she was judging or insulting him, she was just relating what is known to many. And the majority had to recognize and accept that this was true. Issei had gained a lot from being recognized as the op eye dragon, and it had been said that if he became a high-class demon, his influence would have been even greater. Making him someone with a rather unique business future. But now all that went to waste. Now Issei was seen as a former criminal, and even if they made up a false story to explain why he joined the cow's brigade, that won't make him regain his fame again. Now Issei seemed more like someone who will have to work harder than before, so that, in the eyes of the higher-ups, critics and others, he can make up for what he did, which seems almost impossible, since he even stopped being a demon, being no longer bound to demonic society. Making it so that even he cannot go to the underworld without an escort. I even if so, Issei Kun is someone I can totally trust and depend on. Ross was hugged Issei's arm, as if getting his point across. Unlike anyone else who calls himself a man with a bright future, that is nothing when compared to how good and kind Issei Kun is to everyone, and that he is willing to do anything. I even if he is now someone who doesn't have a bright future, he is better than any other idiot who does because if there is something that Issei Kun has that not many men have, it is honest feelings and a noble heart. Andra listened with complete patience and without ever interrupting what his granddaughter was saying, now becoming a little analytical. Issei felt a little happy that Ross was thought of him that way, as did Valerie and some others. Dot. And I. I'll bring more tea. If you'll excuse me. Akeno left the room with a somewhat embarrassed expression. I'll go help Akeno-sama. If you'll excuse me too. Even with that, Roswis and Gondor continued chatting while Issei remained by Roswis's side. How long have you been dating? The since a few weeks ago we're just starting to date, barely. What a short time, even so. Gondor sighed. Dot, they haven't done anything wrong yet, right? Gondor asked, raising an eyebrow. Issei thought almost shouting that this woman is very direct to ask things. The others just watched and heard the conversation without saying anything. And it's not. Like we're married or something. I never said you couldn't have a relationship before you get married. I just told you not to hang out with bad guys and stay with them unnecessarily. Even I want to do erotic things with a boy, Roswis exclaimed with a strange accent while she held Issei's arm. That's what I just told you Gondor replied with the same strange accent. And Gondor realized that the atmosphere in the room was heading in a strange direction, and coughed again. I will accept the relationship between you two. Eh? Responded Roswis with a stupid voice and not knowing what to say to what he heard. Do not get surprised. I said I'll accept it. You have already shared your feelings with a man you are in love with, right? So next time go on a date. Be wait, but. Roswis suddenly panicked. I will come another time and ask you in more details next time. So to both you and your boyfriend, thank you for everything today. Then I will say goodbye for the moment. After saying that, Gondor left the place to head to the hotel that Sona had prepared for her. After Roswis's grandmother left, the atmosphere in the room became very serious. Valerie sighed in relief at all that. Rhea seemed to have a frozen expression. And Ravel looked at the situation with some panic and worry on his face. I'm sorry. It's only for a short period of time, so please cooperate with me. Roswis looked at Issei with a blushing face. And there is no way back for me. Issei, a little doubtful, looked again at Valerie, who only shrugged his shoulders, and with a sign was enough for him to understand that he better play along. 
And so, just like that, it was decided that Issei and Roswas would go on a date. Well, with all this, cooperate with Roswas and, at least until Gondorsen leaves. Already in his room, Valerie was talking to Issei about the Roswas matter. And Lefei was even present. Ito. Well, I'll do what I can, but. Issei scratched his head a little are you okay with this? What's more, what did you talk about with Roswasan? Not much. Valerie sighed. He only talks to me in private and tells me about her grandmother's visit and what she thoughtlessly told him the last time she talked to Gondorsan. Failing to say that she had a boyfriend and with no other option, she was forced to find someone to act as her boyfriend at least until Gondorsan leaves. And for Roswasan, you meet the best requirements, Issei. Be well, I don't know what to say. Issei sighed. It doesn't bother you, right? Of course not. If I couldn't trust the man I love, how can I call myself your partner? Valerie said the last thing, somewhat optimistic and a little blushing. A plus, I could see through her eyes that were telling me that this was important to her. So that's why I couldn't reject her. Damn, since when did I become so soft? Eh, say what you want. But that's what I like about you. What Issei said only made Valerie blush almost to the extreme. Even so, I never thought that Roswasan's grandmother was the famous Gondorsan. Lefay finally spoke, changing the subject. She's famous, right? Lefay nodded to Issei's question. She is famous for being a Norse mage with a rune style, the Gandal of fairy magic, and the sea style of spiritual magic. Roswasan currently uses the rune style, along with a different type of magic created by the Valkyries. She said that she uses magic while she adds spells that she simplified and created herself. Lefay would then take out a memo pad from her pocket and showed a page. There were many circles written in that place. And Issei recognized those symbols, those were the ones Roswis usually uses. I just remembered that she had written them, since she used a strange type of magic. The magic that Roswis and uses must be something she thought up herself. She probably incorporated magic she saw and heard into her own formula. Is that something strange? Lefay denied Issei's question. No, it is not uncommon to find magicians who use her own formula. If you are a magician, you will have at least one formula that suits you. But the magic symbols incorporated in Roswasan magic circles are of high level. The formula incorporated into Roswasan's magic is something she must have come up with on her own, and it reminds me of the Nordic style formula, but you will realize that it is something done with great precision if you look closely. She said Lefay, will pointing to a magic circle written down on his memo pad. But for someone like Issei, who didn't know much about magic, it was useless. Issei believed that he had begun to understand the magical symbols that represented attributes thanks to Valerie, Kuroka, and Lefei, but he was at a loss when it came to specific details. Kuroka also said that Roswasan's formula greatly restricts the amount of magic power consumed in each spell, but also amplifies the defensive and attack power. Valerie now speaks up. If you want an example, it's like in human video games, where there are 50 MP spells and you only need to use 10 MP, but Roswasan has her own magic formula that allows her to use only 5 MP, while retaining all her attack power. That is something possible only for someone who is skilled in the use of magic, and who believes that something like that is very easy to do. That's right. Lefay nodded to Valerie's words. I see. That's easy to understand. Issei crossed his arms and looked a little thoughtful. Dot, so she decreases the amount of magic power she consumes while conserving the full power of the attack. Roswasan had been launching many magic attacks without holding back, and as if that were not enough, she had also kept the consumption rate low while attacking. Huh. That's amazing. Issei became a little thoughtful once again and already remembering something. She is surprised that Kuroka uses an RPG as an example. Because if she remembers correctly, Kuroka whenever she wants when she is resting, enters her room and plays on her console. Although of course, even if she tells him not to use her, it was very clear to say that Kuroka rarely listens to anyone. Even Kuroka was the one who got on Valerie's nerves the most, after Biku of course. I understand that Roswasan is a qualified warrior since I was in the same team as her. But why didn't Roswasan learn the same magic as her grandmother? I don't know the rune style and the gandal style, and I don't think I've seen the sea style either. Issei had one more question about Roswas. Since he had learned a little about rune and fairy symbols from Roswas and believes that she incorporated them into her magic circles. But he doesn't remember seeing her use the Gandal style of the fairies and the others. It certainly must be different to summon. But he doesn't remember her saying that she was good at using them. He doesn't think it's strange for Roswas, who is Gondor's granddaughter, to be able to use the runes, Gandal and Seas, since her grandmother is a great mage. Valerie Lefay did not give her a clear answer, but only looked at each other upon hearing her opinion. They also seemed to think that was something strange. Anyway, now the matter at hand is your date with Roswasan, Issei. 
Valerie sighed. Going out with her could improve your relationship with her, since from what I understand, she is the one you have talked to the least, with even when you were with the Gremory, right? But that's right. Issei put a hand to her chin, remembering. I only had a more normal talk with her on one occasion when I accompanied her to a 100 yen one of hers and bought her some hitties to replace the one I destroyed with my old dress break. Issei smiled bitterly at that memory of her. She still remembers when Ross was scolded him saying that her dress break is an enemy of good quality clothing and that tearing clothes was a waste of good material. And for the first time, he's okay with that. I still remember when you used that technique on me, remember? Valerie narrowed her eyes as she said, making Issei break out in a cold sweat and remember that it was true. Without a doubt, she was saved from suffering Valerie's absolute wrath by sheer luck and she was not naked on that occasion. She became the first woman not to be naked during the dress break. I'm sorry. Issei lowered his head somewhat embarrassed. It doesn't matter anymore. I understand how things were back then. Valerie crossed her arms, sighing. Oh, by the way, Issei-sama. You can just call me Issei without the Sama, Lefei. Issei said with a smile that made Lefei blush, who lowered her head slightly. Be I understand, I Issei asan. Lefei started playing with her fingers. And I was wondering if I could go shopping with you another time. Oh, if you want that, that's fine. I'm not going to deny it to you. Lefei smiled happily at what Issei said. Mu, Issei, what about me? Valerie asked with a very tender pout. Issei sighed. All right. I think I'll go shopping with you to make up for it. Anyway, all of us would need to go shopping at the end of the year, so I guess going somewhere at the beginning of the year wouldn't be a bad idea. Something tells you he told Issei that girls would probably need to buy more things than boys during the New Year holidays. Especially since there are more people living at home this year. I'll go shopping too. Hearing that voice, she watched his office along with Lilith came out of the closet. Since when were they inside the closet? Lilith wants to buy sweets. But just that, Issei thought that she might not have time to meet with Mitsuda and Motohama. I hope he has at least one day to join them. Although it seems that Gaspar would also want to go. The next day, the day was finally the day where Haidu Issei, the Sekar Yuite, would have his date with the former Valkyrie, Roswis. Issei made sure to be as presentable as possible, although Valerie helped him to be presentable in a decent way without exaggerating, apparently he wants everything to go well. And well, with that, Issei was wearing a black jacket and a red shirt under. And he was wearing black gin pants and white shoes. Apparently Issei was starting to like black more for some reason. Anyway, once ready, Issei went to the main entrance of the residence to wait for his appointment. And that's when he found a pair of long boots prepared at the entrance. Maybe they're from Roswis. Well, he couldn't really imagine her wearing that, so at first he thought they were Valerie's or Akeno's. Shortly after that, he felt the presence of someone coming down the stairs. And he obviously recognized her thanks to her sinjutsu. But when he turned around. Issei was somewhat stunned and amazed to see Roswis wearing a white jacket and a short skirt. Roswis certainly dressed like a girl her age. She wasn't the usual Roswis who only wore sweaters. She had her silver hair neatly combed and her lips were shiny, possibly because she had put on some lipstick. And to think that before she looked like a poor lady. Beautiful. Issei said that word in a whisper. Roswis obviously heard him say that thanks to her improved hearing and she blushed a little embarrassed by that comment. But internally he was happy that Issei considers her beautiful. You please don't act strange so suddenly. You'll make this even harder for me. Even if I'm dressed like this. Roswis blushed even more as she said that, it seemed like her face almost turned completely red. Be well, then. We should go out, right? When Issei said that, he felt some presences approaching, and when he looked in that direction, he could see Valerie along with Kuroka, Lefei, Tiamat and Akeno, who looked a little sad, but hid it with a smile. Dot. I just came to tell you that according to Rhea's gremory, you should return by night. Since there will be a meeting before going to the underworld. Valerie reported without seeming indifferent or upset with this quote. Understood. Responded Roswis while Issei just nodded in agreement. I wish you both the best on your date. And don't worry about anything, no one will follow you. What Valerie said made Issei raise an eyebrow in doubt. Valerie, I. Ah, ah. Valerie interrupted Issei, moving her finger from side to side in front of him. Dot, don't look at another girl when you're about to date one, that's the important thing. Also, even if something happens, I will trust the man I fall in love with, and I know that you will have things under control. If not I can trust you to someone else, then I wouldn't deserve to be called your partner, Issei. Issei smiled. Dot, I understand. Just remember that you'll have to make it up to me later, okay? Just like them. Valerie went to see the others who looked a little jealous, but not angry. I will only hope that you will teach me more things about the daily life of humans and what couples do. Tiamat responded with a hand on her waist. You already know what I want. Said Lefei somewhat blushing. Naya, let's spend time of charity another time Naya. 
Kuroka said a little carefree as always. Issei nodded to what they said and then went to see Akeno who seemed to want to say something, but apparently the words weren't coming out. Very well, this is where he has to act. We can go out another time if you want, Akeno. Yes yes. I will go on a date with Issei-kun. Akeno put on a relieved expression after hearing what Issei said. Just like that, once Issei and Roswas left the house. They began to walk down the street, standing side by side. Where would you like to go? Issei asked. Ah, well. To Tokyo, if there is no problem. Responded Roswas a little nervous. Then let's go. With a smile, Issei took Roswas's hand and they went to look for transportation. Roswas blushed at Issei's daring move of taking her hand without asking, but he still didn't push it away, her hand felt warm for some reason. After about an hour of travel, Issei and Roswas arrived at Shinjuku Station. They changed trains once again to head to their destination. I wonder if she is a model. She is amazingly beautiful. Inside the train, everyone was looking at Roswas. Of course, everyone looked at her since she was very beautiful. She was releasing the aura that pretty girls always have, which prevented people from getting close, no one dared to talk to her. If she only wore my sweater or my dress, then she wouldn't be in this situation. Roswas muttered a little embarrassed and uncomfortable because of all the looks people were giving her. That is not true. You would stand out anyway, since you are very beautiful. Issei gave the honest opinion of her. And Roswas was embarrassed with blushing cheeks. Which puzzled Issei a little, since if she thought about it a little, the usual Roswas she met before would have responded with, should I take that as a compliment? Issei couldn't help but think that Roswas acted in a similar way to Valerie or Akeno, but it didn't seem fair that they behaved that way when they were on a date. Issei still remembers when he went on a date with Akeno, and he was surprised that the almost always sadistic and sensual Akeno Himajima could behave like a girl her age. The same applies to Valerie, who although he always acted serious at certain times, now acts more than before like a girl her age. And if you talk about a relationship, obviously she becomes somewhat shy. Anyway, there was no conversation between Issei and Roswas while they were on the train, and they arrived at their destination after 15 minutes of travel. The station they arrived at was a little far from the city. It was then that Roswas said that she had something to do at the station building, so they both arrived at the floor where the 100 yen store was. And the moment they both arrived at the place, Roswas put on a happy face. She began to speak with a trembling voice and a happy expression. E, this is the largest women's 100 yen store. Bella it means beautiful or beautiful in Italian, and this store only has fashion brands for women, it's famous for having a lot of things that don't look like 100 yen. Oh look that tray is so pretty oh, that pencil holder is very elegantly shaped oh, it even has a lot of space despite its eyes. Roswas began to take a look at the products as she left Issei behind. She is so bright that Issei has never seen her like this. Just by looking at her, she made him realize that she was just a girl the same age as her. Except her hobby was. Issei would never have expected them to go to a 100 yen store in Tokyo. Because of the clothes she was wearing right now, Issei thought that they would go somewhere more extravagant or wonderful. Please look at this, Issei kun this, this, and even this for 100 yen, there is not a single product that costs more than 200 or 300 yen, Roswas was very excited just now. And that made Issei think that she won't be able to abandon the poor side of her. But that personality of hers makes him think that she is really Roswas after all. After doing a couple of purchases, Issei and Roswas were taking a break on the cafe terrace. I couldn't help but spend 10,000 yen less dot what was expected from the Bella in Tokyo. Really terrifying. Roswas complained as she looked at her purchases. 10,000 yen was the price of 100 products. Basically, Roswas had bought 100 things, and now she was thinking that she had bought too much. So she had sent what she bought to a nearby freight forwarding agency. She should arrive at the Haidu residence tomorrow. Something good for them, for sure but it had only cost 10,000 yen. Roswas had come all the way to Tokyo, and she bought 100 products at that price. Issei thought that she was fine, since she seemed satisfied. But Issei was wondering if it was okay for a girl Roswas's age to buy those things when she came all the way to Tokyo. And it was then that she started to worry about Roswas's future for a moment. Did I bore you? Asked Roswas a little embarrassed. L sorry for buying all that stuff, while well, I was the only one having fun. Oh, none of that. I was just happy to have been able to come with you to Tokyo, Roswas-san. Issei said calmly. Although it was the first time for him to go out so far with Roswas, it was something new. He had even been able to see a side of her that he usually couldn't see, so it had by no means been boring. After drinking her coffee, Roswas spoke. If I think about it, it's the first time I've gone on a date with a man. Issei was speechless upon hearing that. Although he felt a little honored by this rare opportunity. Although he also made him wonder if it was okay for him to be her partner on her first date. Is it really okay that it's me? Issei asked. 
because if she thought about it a little, Kiba could have accompanied her with more style, or Azazel could have taken her to Tokyo with her sports car that he was so proud of. Compared to those two, the way this date went had been rather ordinary. S if I was asked to choose a man among those I know to date, then I would have chosen you, Ice Kun. Q but please don't get me wrong, it's what if if only someone had asked me, it's just one of those, what if. Stories Roswitz drank her coffee as she turned red. Suddenly she made a sad face after taking a breath. I only studied when I was at home. The warrior maidens, the Valkyries that were around me, always argued about incredible heroes who became warriors of Valhalla. Well, my classmates wasted their time with the opposite hex. I only dedicated myself to studying to get closer to my dream. Issei couldn't help but think that that wasn't a difficult story to imagine. And she was sure that Roswiss continued studying while she said to herself something like, that's disgusting it's vulgar you should join the losing group if you don't study. Roswiss looked towards the horizon. I was able to become a Valkyrie because I spent my entire youth studying, but now that I think about it, I should have played a little back then. What are you saying? You are young yet. You're only one or two years older than me, so from now on you can use your youth to do whatever you want. Issei couldn't help but think that maybe Roswiss is the same age. Both Roswiss and the people around her forgot her true age since she was a teacher, but since she was still in the bloom of her youth, she could experience it, considering that it was too early for her to say something that only an old man would say. It's incredible that you were the bodyguard of old Odin, who is the chief god. Really, it's amazing to have a story working together with the chief of a mythology. Even though he left me behind. Roswiss got a little depressed because of that and then put on a somewhat sad expression. Also. I'm not someone who has gone as far as you say, Issei Kun. Saying that, Roswiss took out an emblem from her pocket. There was a complicated symbol carved into it. A single glance showed a circle made of runes. And just by seeing that, Issei recognized that circle with runes. It's the one he had seen the night before. It was the symbol that was in the magic circle of Roswiss's grandmother, Gondor, and it was the same. About that there was no doubt. This is a unique symbol. The symbol of a house, which has been passed down in my family. The firstborn inherits the symbol, and it is introduced into his body and soul, so that it is passed on to the next generation. I am the firstborn, but I couldn't. Ross was sent stopped and then continued speaking in a lower tone of voice. Inherit the symbol. In the northern region, Asgard, the demigods who live there create and polish their unique magics, techniques and traditions that were passed down through their family, they have the responsibility of passing them on to the next generation, and they use that symbol to recognize the inheritance, when the generation changes, and the symbol is engraved in your body and soul. Roswiss's family was no different, so they had her heir wear the emblem for the time she inherited it. Roswiss's mother had also inherited the emblem, so it was planned that the eldest daughter, Roswiss, would inherit it as well. But Roswiss had not been able to inherit it. No matter how many times she tried the ritual to inherit it, the emblem did not engrave itself on Roswiss's body, soul, and magic circle. I have no brothers, so a distant uncle inherited the emblem in the end. That boy completed the ritual to inherit it immediately, and I remember that very well, because no one around me, not even me, could complain about it. I was bad at using the magic that my brother specialized in. Family. I don't know if it was because I had bad compatibility with it, but I still can't use the sea style of spiritual magic. I learned to use the rune style and the gandal style, but what surprised me the most is that I got used to the style of warrior maidens who use offensive magic for battle very quickly. Then, I became the most powerful offensive mage in my family. I and my family, who uses the styles of runes, gandal and seas, I was the only one outsider. I was only compatible with magic that my family rarely used. I was lucky enough to become a Valkyrie. But the results I had were nothing compared to my grandmother's during the early days of she died. Roswiss confessed that while she became depressed. She had bad compatibility with the magic that had been passed down for generations in her family, and in her place, she was talented in other things. Issei couldn't help but think of Sererg since he was in a similar situation, but it must be different since his family has an important role being the great king, which is an important position in the politics of the underworld. For Issei, who was born in an ordinary family, the problem of inheritance was a small thing, since he didn't get anything from it. She also learned that Roswiss was bad at harvesting a warrior's soul when she was a Valkyrie. She had an unfortunate situation until she was called by Odin. Although Issei couldn't help but think that that was fate. Perhaps it was Roswiss's destiny to join the Gremory clan that had great offensive power. Maybe it was just a matter of fate that Rias ran into her. Roswiss spoke as she blushed. The wizards in my family were good at communicating with fairies and using spiritual magic. Still, I was unique since I started learning offensive magic very quickly. So I started to improve because I was able to improve my stamina and energy consumption. My parents' responses surpassed praise, and they were only surprised. Phew, but you didn't learn defensive magic? asked Issei, scratching his head. Yes, it's true. 
To make it short, my power is different from that of my family. I had a vague idea of inheriting my family's traditions when I was a child and becoming a Valkyrie just like my grandmother. The people around me also had high expectations of me. But that didn't happen. What was supposed to be never happened. Even to this day, I don't know what I will become and what to do. I had a feeling of anxiety about my future, so I just did my job and started worrying about money. Roswis was talented. But it was not the talent that those around her expected. Still, because she was blessed with her abilities, she was able to get a job. But she still wasn't able to find the answer about what she really wanted to do. The concerns Roswis had were those of a normal person. Issei previously thought that she was similar to Sererg, but it seems that the origin is different. Roswis continued as she put aside the problem of her. None of my parents, the people of my clan, and even my grandmother blame me, and they still treat me normally. My family came to accept my situation saying well, there are times when people like her appear in the clan. That makes me happy. But maybe I would have had a different life if they had criticized me. No, this life I have now is also quite different. Maybe the reason Roswis became a demon was because she wanted a change. I was really happy when I was chosen as Aden Sama's escort. He was a troublesome person, but I felt that it was a job worth doing. Even though he abandoned me, Roswis was the only one capable of escorting Aden. Additionally, Roswis is the Valkyrie who lasted the longest as his escort. Because of that, it is said that the other Valkyries were having a hard time. Roswis reviewed her life while he sighed. I quickly graduated home without being able to enjoy my youth, and I was also not able to inherit my family emblem. Even if I didn't have any notable results in my time as a Valkyrie, I was able to become Adensama's escort. I came to Japan escorting Adensama and became a teacher in the human world after being reincarnated. Like a demon. Looking back, I don't know what I will become and what I will do, since I have been going around in circles all the time. Roswis laughed at herself. She was really going in circles. There were pros and cons for the members of the Grimory group, so it was a team that brought together those with problems. I really feel like I should apologize to my mother. I don't think I lived up to her expectations. Roswis said as she looked at the ground. It seemed like she felt bad about her not being able to inherit the family emblem from her. And Roswis would look at Issei. I'm sorry. I talked so much about my life, Issei Kun. I tried to avoid these topics even with those who are close to me. I guess I wanted to share it with someone because of my grandmother's arrival. No, I don't care at all. Instead, it makes me happy because I feel like I know more about you, Roswisan. Issei knew that Roswis rarely talks about her. She had shown him the side that she loves 100 yen stores and that she can't handle alcohol very well, but she didn't talk much about her life. It seemed like she got quite a bit of information at today's appointment. Roswis continued as she was a little embarrassed. I don't regret becoming a demon, you know. The health system of the demon world is well structured and my salary is excellent. The people of the Grimory clan are very good and the environment I find myself in is wonderful. Well, the Grimory group is full of surprises because we get into many unique situations. But the lifestyle of being a teacher at Ku Academy is something more worth doing than I originally thought. Is it fun to be a teacher? Ask Issei. Yeah, I never thought teaching was so much fun. The feedback Roswis receives from students is good. Roswis is a civilian teacher who is good at teaching, and because she knows how to explain the key points of the topic she teaches, the classes she teaches get good grades on her exams. Furthermore, since her age is not much different from that of her students, she has great popularity as a foreign teacher. She can scold people quite a bit and give strict opinions, but there are few students who oppose her, and most take her recommendations seriously. It seems that Roswis is becoming an example to the other teachers and that they hold her in high regard because she is someone capable of giving her opinion to Azazel, which is quite rare. And speaking of teachers. I found out that you received an offer from Sona Kaichu to be a teacher at her school. Tell me, will you accept her offer? Issei asked, interested in that. Since Sona wanted Roswis to be a magic teacher. I'm still thinking about it. Obviously it's not something she asked me to decide in a year or two. First of all, since we are going to go to that school soon, I decided to think about it while observing the situation closely. Roswis responded. I still don't know what I'm capable of doing, but teaching is something I like to do. No, I came to like it. That's why I'm waiting for the event we're going to participate in. Roswis smiled. I will also talk to you if something happens. So feel free to talk to me about anything even if it's any complaint you have. I assure you Issei. Then I'll make you carry my purchases again. Going to the 100 yen store with you wasn't bad. And it also became a good excuse for my grandmother. Issei laughed a little at that as she shook her head amusingly. She again with that thing about 100 yen stores. Maybe that's okay. And maybe it wouldn't be a bad idea to go see a movie or visit somewhere. Oh well, since she enjoys it, it seems like it's okay.
But just when Issei was going to propose that they go somewhere else. There is not a single thing in which you are inferior to your grandmother. Another person's voice was heard. Issei, thanks to Sinjutsu, felt not only a presence that he knew very well, but rather two presences. And when he turned behind him, he saw that the two people behind them were a young man with silver hair who was handsome, and he was wearing a black suit. And the other person was a beautiful woman with long red and black hair. Issei recognized them instantly, while Roswis instinctively became alert. How long, little Sekuruite? And you must be the ex-Valkyrie, Roswis, right? Greeting the beautiful woman with black red hair. I say kun, are they? Asked Roswis in a cold sweat. Euclid Lucifuge. Grafia sends younger brother. And that woman is Nehema, one of Adam's lovers, as the Bible says. Issei introduced the unexpected guests, and Roswis was horrified almost to the extreme to have those two in this place, right in front of them. Roswis had read the report they had on the four main leaders of Klepeth. And obviously he was shocked and horrified to find out what they were capable of. What do you want here? Issei asked a little nervous and serious, and holding back wanting to activate his powers and the sacred gear. Since the common people could see them. Also, she noticed that Nehema did not have the horns on her head like the other time she saw her. Indicating that perhaps I hide them with magic. I didn't come here to see you hide you Issei. I have business with the woman next to you. Euclid would look at Roswis. I'll be direct. Former Valkyrie Roswis would you join us? Issei was speechless at what Euclid said. Did he want to recruit Roswis in a place like this? No, what's more, why Roswis? Issei had many questions in his head while Roswis turned pale at this. Here is the wisdom. He who has understanding, let him count the numbers of the beast. Because it is a human number and her number is 666. Nehemiah now said with one hand on her waist, and Roswis was surprised to hear that. It's a line from the apocalypse.it really gives a demon a headache if he tries to recite something from the Bible. Said Euclid with a hand on his head. I heard you wrote a report during your time as a student in Asgard. And that the title of that report was concerning the beast of the apocalypse. Issei was speechless knowing that Roswis wrote about something like that when she was a student. And with that, everything made sense now. That connected the comments of Roswis being seen in the library that Mitsuda and Motohama mentioned. Roswis was reading books related to the Bible.so that was the reason. She probably remembered the report from her when she heard about Trahiksa. Am I got rid of it because I couldn't write a proper conclusion. Roswis said with a trembling voice. What I submitted was a different report, but. How do you know that? Euclid made a displeased smile at her question. We are the ones who are putting together every little information related to Trahiksa. Even if it is a report that was thrown away, we will go and use it even if it is at the end of the world. Roswis shivered with fear upon hearing that. I talked about the content to my roommate back then. Don't tell me. Euclid shrugged his shoulders at Roswis's question. We tried to search her memory but only got bits and pieces of information. That's why we changed our method and came to recruit you directly. You damned bastards. Roswis trembled with rage upon hearing that. You bastards. I'll finish you off in this one. Roswis raised her hand as if she wanted to launch a magical attack, but she didn't. Since she remembered that they were in a public area and now there were many people looking at them with curious eyes because of the commotion they were causing. Fighting here is a very bad idea. We are sorry to cause this commotion. We will leave immediately. Euclid stood up from his seat along with Nehemiah. And just when they both passed by Issei and Roswis. Your friend is fine. We didn't take her hostage. Gigi, we only want your skills. You are more exceptional than you think. Nehemiah praised Roswis so to speak and then looked at Issei. Area, you look more mature than the last time. Is it because you already know what a woman's body is? Issei blushed slightly at what Nehemiah said and the latter touched Issei's chin with a finger. I can smell it on you. He he he, I already want to see Razavim's face when he finds out that you slept with his daughter, of whom he is undoubtedly going to die. You fu 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 fu. Do you? Issei felt more embarrassed at what Nehemiah said. What's more, how did you know that? If you're wondering how I know. Well, it turns out that we Sekubi know very well when someone is a virgin or not. Nehemiah ran her finger over Issei's face. The smell of Valerie Lucifer is on you, and your aura is different from the last time I saw you. Enough proof to know. What a shame. Even I would show you what a real woman in bed is. Issei blushed a little and then shook his head and became neutral. Um, I won't deny that you are beautiful. But Valerie is much more beautiful than you, and she wouldn't change her for anything. Wow, what a shame. Nehemiah mocked a little. See you later Sekar Uite. I'm looking forward to the revenge for Romania. I have a new toy and I would like to use it with you another time. Until then. Saying that, Euclid and Nehemiah disappeared from the place into the crowd of people. After what happened in the cafeteria, Issei and Roswis returned to the Haidu residence. Furthermore, on the way they reported what happened. Currently it was already night, and all the members of Grimory, Issei, Valerie and company, had gathered in Issei's room. For them to appear in Tokyo. 
we were careless. Rias regretted the lack of care of her. This city had already been raided once, and because it was originally an important area for the three Bible factions, the security of the area had been increased. Of course Tokyo, the capital of Japan, received help from every force that was on alert. Mainly the supernatural group organized by the High Command of Japan was on alert as well as the main force. They are clearly different from the supernatural beings that carried out attacks until now. Clippeth seems to have no problem involving the human world and causing deaths. Arthur had a point in what he said. They were different. To accomplish their goal, they would bring their evil to humans and the human world. No, to any being. All for the sake of fulfilling your wishes. As a result, the vampire world had almost been annihilated. If they had been fought in that place and they had summoned the evil dragons. The disaster would not be enough to describe what the situation would have been like. The deaths would not be just 100 or 200 people. Issei thought that perhaps his and Roswiss's actions had been reckless, but. Issei, you shouldn't let this get to you. Said Valerie, drawing the brunette's attention. They are terrorists with power, to be frank, they could have appeared anywhere if they wanted and confronted you during your private time, that was something we had never anticipated. Yes, those actions are also risky for them. Now it was Akeno who spoke. Even if they can enter major cities, it is not something they can do often. If they do it once, then that would cause them to lose their second chance because they would strengthen the defenses in that area. Unless they had to, they wouldn't make their move. Ravel would look at Roswiss. They approached Roswiss and, despite the risk they were taking. I guess this shows how valuable the report Roswiss and made when she was a student is to them, correct? Rias continued after her. Judging from her words, it is natural to think that there is a high probability that the report has a lot of value to them. It's time for Azazel to contact us, so listen to what he has to say. Roswiss, could you talk to Azazel about this? Yes. Roswiss nodded to what Rias said. A few minutes later, they received Azazel's call. The truth is that Azazel was not in the city at the moment. He had returned to the underworld and had been arguing with Grigori's researchers for a few days about the sacred gears, the other world, and Klippus movements. The hologram of Azazel appeared in the magic communication circle. And everyone explained the current situation. Odd I see, so they're going after Roswiss Azazel closed his eyes as he put his hand under his chin, does everyone know about the missing skilled magicians? Everyone nodded at the ask. They heard it from Riaz and Gondor the other day, there is a common denominator between the incidents. All of them had been investigating the number of the beast, 666. And they were researchers who had been investigating with a different method than the normal one. Apparently those types of researchers are the ones who will come to the assembly, some were speechless at Azazel's report. Now there was a clear connection. According to Euclid, Roswiss wrote a report regarding 666. And the missing Magi had the same type of research regarding 666. In other words, they are kidnapping magicians who have information about the number of the beast, Trahiksa, right. Azazel nodded to Valerie's words. You can imagine what type of seal was used if you know about Revelation and the God of the Bible. I concluded that there are about 23 different powerful seals that Clippeth has difficulty breaking. We are currently having a conference about how much time we have left until 666 is released based on that information. We have no intention of those guys releasing 666, but we need to prepare for the worst. Everyone understood very well what Azazel said. Since. If 666 was freed and fraud against the Great Red, what would happen to this world? Azazel laughed after seeing how everyone reacted to what they had heard, it's too early to get depressed, young people. We are planning to have some insurance aside from yourselves, just in case it is needed. I need to be prepared for that soon, but we will discuss that in the future just hearing that, some were wondering, did Azazel have a plan? Since they were talking about this guy, it seemed like he had that insurance in a different sense than they thought. Well, I don't know if I can trust the answer we'll get after this conference. We don't even know what kind of influence the missing magicians will have on the seals. Some wondered what happened to the people who were kidnapped by those people. It's Klippeth they were talking about. They could only think that they were using an unpleasant method to make people do what they wanted. I'll just ask you a simple question. Roswiss how did you try to encrypt the number 666? Azazel asked looking at the ex-Valkyrie. I investigated using the number 616, which was the one with a different approach. I used that number to compare it to the documents and incidents that occurred between each force, while he made a technical and a numerical formula. Odd I see, just as I thought it seems that Azazel had predicted most of what Roswiss had said. But some were wondering, what happens with 616? Shouldn't it be 666? While many apocalypse researchers focused on the number 666, a portion of magicians used different methods to get closer to an answer using the number 616. Those who were kidnapped were all magicians researching the number of the beast, using the number 616. Some were surprised to hear that. 
so there was something like that. And one of the people who was doing research with that method was Roswiss. As Azul continued as he grabbed his chin, most researchers don't see the number 616 as correct. Even we, Grigori, think that dot but seeing how those guys make their move, maybe the god of the bible made the seals against 666, using the number 616. As Azul said that as if he was talking to himself. More than explaining to the young people, he seemed to be talking while he was surprised by his own hypothesis. And when Azazel realized that he was speaking out loud, he let out a small cough and looked at Roswiss. Okay, first of all, Roswiss, could you write down everything you remember from your report from when you were a student on a piece of paper and send it to me? I'll check it out to see how much is related to 666. He had already written it a while ago. Roswiss put a stack of reports that had difficult magic symbols and formulas written on them into a teleportation magic circle and sent them out. In the magic communication circle, the reports appeared in Azazel Sensei's hand with a glow. It seemed that the transfer had been a success. Wow, you are amazing. For you to do the same research as your grandmother, I guess the family is similar, Azazel seemed to praise Roswiss for this. Although Roswiss was surprised to learn that a grandmother, Gondor, investigated the same thing as her. And just like those who were going to the underworld assembly, Roswiss's grandmother, Gondor, was also going to go for having investigated about 666. That night, Roswiss continued with that strange expression and didn't speak at all. Things seemed to have become more serious now. But now, for our protas, there was another matter that they had to attend to in a few days. And that was the raiding games school that Sona Citri was organizing. Chapter 26 The School of the Underworld, the raiding games school that anyone can attend that was the dream of Sona Citri and her family, was unexpectedly located in the Agares territory. Normally it wouldn't have been strange for the school to be built on Citri territory, which belonged to the next leader of House Citri, but political issues got into this. Furthermore, it became a bit of a complicated situation. Obviously Seraphol Leviathan was positive about the establishment of this school, since she was one of the sponsors of Sona Citri, her younger sister. Even so, this action was going to mobilize politicians, high-ranking officials who held issues related to lineage and nobility in high esteem. In her eyes, a raiding game school where anyone could study regardless of their background was something they did not want. Obviously there were going to be opinions and pressure against this fact. If Seraphol Leviathan got angry and argued with them, then it wouldn't be strange if they took his actions as Leviathan's action policy. The reason why Rias and the Gremory family couldn't intervene was related to that. If the nobles interpreted this as the intentions of the Gremory, in other words of Serzich's Lucifer, then they would assume that the chances of a dispute between the four great mass factions were high. In the end, Rias could only help in a small way. Discreet, Sona Citri had really thought about giving up her dream. Apparently, doing something that would affect her sister politically is something that the next leader of House Citri should not do and would be considered stupid. Still, a savior appeared. And the one who came to the rescue was the current leader of the House of Agares. What would be expected of the person who has the intermediary position? The trust that the nobles have in Archduke Agares is very high. He gained the support of the House of High King Bale, who was at the top when it came to things of blood and nobility, and built the first raiding games school that anyone can attend. That is the reason why today, a couple of days after the date between Issei and Roswiss. The Gremory group, Issei, Valerie, Kuroka, Lefay, Tiamat, Irina, Ravel, Arthur, Biku and Fenner, they went to the underworld to help at Sona's school for a few days. They had to teleport several times to get there. First they went to Gremory Castle, and then they teleported to Agar's territory. And it was decided that they would be here between today and tomorrow. The place where the school was built was very close to the aerial city of Agar's. Agrees, the city that is called the land of the raiding games and the place where it is said that the game was going to be inaugurated. Raiding game between Bale and Gremory. But due to circumstances, this never took place. And the name of the city where Sona Citri's raiding game school was, is called Oros, that was the name of the city. It was one of the places that represented the Agares territory, which had the best agricultural products in the underworld. There were many workers who made their living as farmers, but the population of the area was not large. It would not have been strange for this place to be developed as a tourist spot because it was so close to the aerial city of Agares, which was the sacred ground for the raiding games. But sadly, the city that attracted tourism was located in the opposite direction from the aerial city of Agares, since the aerial city of Agares was located between two cities. Furthermore, since tourists who came to visit the territory of Agares would spend their time visiting Oros. Furthermore, they rarely went down to nearby cities. In other words, this city was quiet and peaceful, even though it was so close to the famous aerial city. The place our protas teleported to was the highest floor of the tower in the center of the city. Fields producing different grains were scattered around the city, and you could also see several windmills. This place really seemed peaceful and calm. 
There were even fields, windmills and European-style stone houses. There wasn't any disturbance or noise, which you would usually hear in cities in a place like this. Normally it was the official governor of the city who should be waiting for them in front of the teleportation magic circle. But who ended up receiving them was. Hello Haidu. Guys. Saji was the one who greeted you as he greeted you with an optimistic laugh. It would have been normal for the mayor of the city to welcome Rhea's Gremory, who was the princess of the house of Gremory. Unfortunately, the mayor went to the magical assembly mentioned above, so he couldn't come. And Rhea's hadn't come for a political matter either, so she had told the mayor that they didn't need a formal welcome. And the official governor handed over his position to Saji to receive them, and that was it. Hello again, Saji. Issei responded to Saji's greeting, and they both exchanged a handshake. I admit that the view of this one is incredible. Isn't it true? It is a province of the underworld after all. Although she is not very famous so to speak. Saji smiled bitterly. I heard that there would be performances and the like in town to allow the wizard assembly to begin. Apparently the mayor of the city likes to have meetings, so this place became a place where people meet each other. Furthermore, you can see the huge space for the rating games, agrees, so you could say that this place is the most suitable. Saji sounded full of energy, indicating that he liked the city. It really was a good city. There didn't seem to be any fight since it was so calm. I would really like to grow things in a place like this. Lefei looked at the city as her eyes shone. Lefei, although she came from a high and noble class family, she also liked simple things like botany. Well, she left the work to you, and I eat the products Naya. Kuroka said carefree as almost always. The idea of working in itself is not much to her liking, or it is not really. You two, better not think too much about the future for now. Valerie spoke to get those two out of their respective world. Well then, follow me. Kaichu is waiting for us. Saji informed, taking the lead since he will be the guide. And everyone followed him towards their destination. After a while of everyone following Saji and talking about trivial things, a new construction appeared in the southern part of the city. Everyone was surprised to see the building. That was because the building was identical to the Kuo Academy in the human world. It just looked a little smaller than the real Kuo Academy, but judging by the structures that looked like a gymnasium and an activity yard, the building seemed to be based on the original academy. At the entrance to the school was a plaque that had the words Oro's Academy, written in Infernian. Indicating that they used the name of the city for the school. It seems like an appropriate name. And some were sure that the annoying people would not have been calm if they used the name Citri or Bale at school. Anyway, everyone passed through the school entrance and headed to the main building. On the activity grounds, there were already kids doing things like running or competitions using their demonic power. Looking carefully, members of the Citri and Bale groups could be seen watching over the children. Those kids had to be participants in the school's test day. When everyone entered the main structure, Sona Citri welcomed them. Aichu, I brought our guests as he asked me. Saji announcement to the king of him. Thank you Saji. Thanks Sona. Now go to the location assigned to you. Hearing that, Saji left after saying see you later and waving goodbye to everyone. Congratulations on achieving your dream, Sona. Rias congratulated her with a smile. Thank you Rias. Sona thanked with a half smile. This is only the first school and it is still yet to open, but we were still able to organize this open day. So. Sona raised her hand as if indicating that she is letting them in. Let me show you the place. But that said, everyone began to follow Sona who would guide them inside the school. Children and their parents appeared and disappeared in the corridor. You could see a person from the bail group who was acting as a teacher and showing them something from outside the school. The boys listened to the talk while putting on a serious face. His parents, who were watching from the back of the classroom, also had a serious expression. All the members of the bail group who had been summoned by Sona were acting as teachers while the Citri group helped them. Well, the members of the Citri group were students after all. They would not be able to fulfill the role of teachers. Furthermore the volunteer staff that had been gathered by Sona were moving between the classrooms as if they were busy. Most of the children were 10 years old. In the human world, they would be in elementary school. There were also those who were 15, but the ones who stood out the most were those in high school. How many of them are there? Rias asked Sona. This is just a sample day in which people who heard the rumors or who found out from other people come, but there are more than we imagined. There are approximately 150 students today. If we include parents and siblings, then the number easily exceeds 400 people. Oh, I see. So the number of boys exceeds 100, huh? Issei was surprised at what he heard. But for all these people to have come even when they didn't make an official notice. It was said the demon boys were valuable, so that number was good if you took that into account. There were many kids who couldn't go to school even though they wanted to. Obviously both the students and their parents who came to this since the adults looked at him seriously and others with a certain indifference, while the young people were only still surprised to see him and did not seem indifferent. 
possibly all of them already know about the current state of the Seker Yute and what he did, so it would not be surprising if many now saw him with indifference, although it was surprising that others did not see him indifferent. Anyway, leaving that aside, everyone walked through the corridor that connected to another building and entered the gym, where a voice full of energy could be heard. Listen in order to punch, they need to curve their hips and release their fists directly, as if they were punching with their whole body. Yeah, the one who was teaching the students how to throw good punches in the gym was Sarayarg Bale. The students energetically threw their punches at the same time as Sarayarg, even when it was somewhat difficult to do. Oh, I can imagine what this is. Tiamat said with a half smile and a hand on his waist. Yes. Sarayarg San is teaching the students martial arts. Sona reported. As everyone must already know, Sarayarg San is considered the strongest young demon of all that even great nobles prefer not to face him. Even though the raiding game between Grimory and Bale could not take place, Sarayarg San was most recognized for fighting the terrorists and defeating them using only his fists. That's why he is in charge of the martial arts class. And they all learn from him without hesitation. Oh, well I didn't expect a demon to fight like that. Tiamat put a hand to her chin. Him. Sarayarg Bale right. Is he perhaps a member of the house of the great King Bale, who carry the Hakai no Chikara? That's right. He nodded Ria's dot however, my cousin is different from others. Since in a very rare case, he was not born with the Hakai no Chikara of the Bale family, he also has no talent for magic. So he was despised by the Bale family and was banished along with his mother, Miss Lavapula. And some time after that, Lord Bale had another son with another woman who did inherit the Hakai no Chikara. And a few years after that, Sarayard confronted the Bale family for the title of future heir, facing his half-brother and defeating him with only martial arts, and thanks to that he became the heir of his house, and the others could not refuse it. Even though he does not wield the Hakai no Chikara, Sarayard has his own followers. Oh, something quite admirable without a doubt. Tiamat undoubtedly recognized Sarayard Bale's bravery and willpower to become the heir of his house, despite not possessing the power of his family. Normally Tiamat I used to think that without talent, one is nothing in this world, and that talent is everything. But upon meeting Issei, someone who is talentless and yet very strong, that made him understand that even without talent, one can reach the top if he puts his mind to it. I have seen the games in which Sarayard Bale has participated and heard the rumors of his fights against the terrorists. Valerie crossed his arms. According to Azazel, Sarayard Bale is as strong as Issei in his balance breaker, Al less like that it was before. Oh really? Is that guy that strong? Asked Biku a little excited. Yes. Even before the trip to Kyoto, I had a practice fight with him. And let me tell you, it was a little difficult to face him. Issei looked at his hand and squeezed it while he remembered Dot when he hit him, I felt like my hands were going numb. Dot I felt like he was hitting a wall. And only with his bare hands was he able to pierce my armor. Now I understand. Tiamat said a little seriously. And to think that a talentless demon is this ridiculously strong. Ha Sarayard threw a punch into the air, and the students repeated his action. It was then that Sarayard noticed the group of visitors and was surprised for a moment, then smiled slightly. OK young people, that's enough for now. Go rest and we'll continue another time. Hi, Sarayard sensei all the students nodded in agreement. And it was then that some noticed the presence of Issei and company in the place. I'm glad you came, Riaz, hi to Issei. Sarayard greets, sighing and putting a towel around his neck in order to get closer to those mentioned. It's also good to see you, Sarayard san Issei greeted Sarayarg, and they both shook hands. I see that with this, your dream could come true. Well, you could say that more or less. Sarayarg would give a slight glance at the resting students. This unprecedented school has meaning behind it. I hope that one day this example expands in the territory. No. Sarayarg shook his head and makes determined eyes. We must make sure that happens. I teach them hand to hand combat. If they lack talent, they can use other things to replace it. It may be knowledge. It may be strength. I am in charge of strength. I teach the kids who came today. Even though it is my first time being a teacher. I teach them while I read a book that teaches me how to explain it to them. It shows that they are taking it very seriously. Said Valerie looking at the students. They have so little talent, but it is clear that if they try hard, one day they will go very far. Heh, I'm surprised that someone like you would say that, Valerie Lucifer. Sarah Erg laughed. You who were born with talent and are a very rare existence, I am surprised that you recognize effort and hard work. Oh please, even having talent I had to work too hard to get to where I am. Valerie responded a little offended. Dot in the end, I understood that even talent is nothing if you don't train it. What the demons of today need is training. Eh, uh, I agree. Sarayarg stated with a half smile as he looked at his fist. Dot this big badass ugly fist of mine that I trained to get this far. Dot but as I was teaching hand to hand combat to the boys, I realized that I was finally doing it. I may be exaggerating, but I felt blessed to discover that my fist is so valuable. Japan is an incredible country. 
Sona murmurs. Anyone has the right to learn. That country where you, Haidu Kun, Tsubaki, and the others grew up in, is a place with many more educational opportunities than the underworld. Well, that's true. Issei scratched the back of his neck. I was never in a situation where I wasn't allowed to go to school or wasn't allowed to learn what I wanted. School existed as something natural, and there were people who taught us as if it were something natural. That's why we must do our best. Sona looked a little proud. We haven't started yet. We will overcome obstacles one after another. Heh, I never thought you'd say something I'd normally say. That shows your passion for this school, and I'm happy. Ria's complimented Sona who nodded. Oh, that's. And it can't be. A student's scream was heard that caught the attention of Issei and company. And when everyone looked in a certain direction, they saw that the students were gathering in the same place. And some wondered what was happening in that place. It seems that it has arrived. So it seems. But Sona and Sarayarg said left the rest intrigued. Did they know who had arrived? When everyone could see better and the students made room to let a certain person pass. Everyone could see that in the center was a man with gray eyes and hair with a kind smile. And apparently, some recognized him. The Dihauser Belial. Issei was left almost speechless when she heard what Ria said. Am I hearing well? Did Dihauser say Belial? If that is so, then it is incredible Issei had heard about Dihauser Belial and that he is the champion of the rating games and is in first place in the rating games ranking, plus he is a supreme class demon of the highest class. Someone who is at the same level than the mass, perhaps being surpassed by them by a small margin. Incredible. So that's Dihauser Belial, huh? Valerie also heard the rumors and so on about the rating games champion and what he's capable of. The one who is known as Emperor Belial, someone to certainly fear. And he is. Many wished to face him, even me. Sarayarg said a little defiantly. He sometimes dreamed of defeating Emperor Belial and rising as the new champion. Yo, but they are Sona Citri, Sarayarg Bale, and Rhea's Gremory with their group, right? Dihauser began to approach those mentioned, and some felt a little tense having the champion ride in front of them. This is a good school without a doubt. And it seems that talented students will come here. I honestly thank you for your visit, Dihauser Sama. Sona greets with a slight bow as do others. I still can't believe that the champion came to visit. Issei was still in a state of not being able to believe what he sees, but it was real without a doubt. The truth is that Sir Dihauser Belial is going to film a movie tomorrow in the air city of Agrees. Sarayarg whispered to Issei, and those who didn't know. Sir Dihauser Belial will play the title role. So this visit was just in passing. The champion movie? Unbelievable. Kiba couldn't help but show the amazement of him. I will help as much as I can. Dihauser looks at everyone. Having competitors with potential appear would be a wonderful thing. Dihauser would then go to see Issei. You are the Sekiryute, right? Yes. Issei nodded. It is a shame that due to the circumstances that occurred, I was not able to see your fight against Sarayard Bale. But it is clear that you did a great job by almost completely destroying the Cow's Brigade, although they have returned worse than before. Dihauser would put his hand on Issei's shoulder. I have heard that you can even have official one on one confrontations without restrictions, as long as the mass and the high command as well as the entire public agree. Because it would be interesting to face you one day in circumstances like that. B for me, it would be quite an honor, Dihauser Sama. Issei gave a slight bow showing his gratitude. Well, until then. With that said, Dihauser Belial waved goodbye to everyone and headed in another direction, leaving the gym. This is incredible, hi do Issei. The brunette went to see Sarayarg with some doubt. This can be interpreted as the champion challenging you to a duel, although this cannot be done for now. It's true. Sona agreed, adjusting his glasses. Because we are in this situation with Klippeth, even the professional rating games have been cancelled. No one will be able to relax until this is resolved, and everyone is putting their efforts into overthrowing Rizavim Live and Lucifer and the allies once and for all. Of the dot. You'll see we will, Kaichu. Be sure of that, and they will be able to have rating games again like before. Issei said more than determined. Anyway, let's move on to the other thing. Sona would look at everyone. Rias, you and your peerage will be in charge of certain classes and will teach the students about the evil pieces, okay? Alright. We will do our best to teach. Rias stated. Hi do Kun, you for now along with Valerie Lucifer and his companions, if you want you can take the rest of the day and explore the city. Said Sona. Since it seems that due to your current situation, I think no one would want that you teach. Oh, don't worry, I understand that, Kaichu. I guess we'll see the other classes then, right? If you like. No problem. Sona nodded to what Issei said. And so, our prota's first day at the Oro's Academy began. And that's all a pawn should do. Haruko Nomura was giving a class on everything pawns do along with Saji Genshiru. Both Citri pawns demonstrated to the students using the promotion. Promoting themselves to knights to move faster, to bishop to launch stronger demonic blasts, and to ruck to demonstrate their incredible strength and endurance. 
Obviously the students were amazed at what the pawns were capable of, understanding now why they are the first to go to the front when it comes to fighting. And at the entrance door of said classroom, Issei was watching Saji and Ruruko's class while he was crossing his arms and leaning against the wall. Okay everyone. Among humans and hybrids, there are those who have special powers. Saji began to speak now dot, and humans and half-humans can be born with sacred gears, which is a different power than that of demons and other races. Saji decided to activate his sacred gears of the prison dragon Vritra, causing a pair of gauntlets to appear in his hands, but head similar to those of an eastern dragon. Just like black boots with purple lines appeared on his feet. Once Saji finished his demonstration, another teacher, who was a member of the Bale group, began the explanation. Saji's role in that class was to be his demonstration of the sacred gear, as well as talking about the pawns together with Ruruko. Dot and one Saji and Ruruko decided to leave the room after having their work done, they ran into Issei at the entrance of the room. The job you two. They make a good duo of teachers. Issei congratulates them, raising his thumb. He, thanks. Saji thanked, scratching the back of his neck and remembering something. Oh, right. Namura-san, for now go do your other duty, I'll catch up with you later. Okay, Jen senpai See you later. Haruko said goodbye, raising her hand and leaving the place. Hey hi do. The aforementioned stopped by to see Saji who seemed a little proud. The boys called me sensei. They called me sensei with a smile. Even so. I'm still far from being one. Saji looked happy as he said that. His dream was to be a teacher at the rating game school. He did not yet have the license to be a teacher, but he was always full of spirit because he wanted to get that license. Still, Saji must have found this day quite entertaining, and he was sure that this reinforced his desire. That was because his eyes were now full of energy. I do, I realized after seeing the boys here. That I will definitely become a teacher. Even though I need to get a promotion and become a middle class demon. But I will definitely make it. No matter how long it takes, I will definitely do it. I'm sure you'll make it. Then you will be able to teach. Issei nudged Saji lightly to encourage him, and the latter scratched his head a little embarrassed. With that, both young people decided to leave the place and on the way they continued talking about trivial things. And when they arrived at the academy courtyard, Issei could see how some students, between boys and girls, were close to Valerie and seemed to admire her with just seeing her. Of course, Valerie is beautiful, but on this occasion, she seems to be different for something else. Is it true that you are a descendant of Lucifer and the bearer of the hacker Yuku? Asked a girl who seemed to be very curious and had her eyes shining. Eh hey, yes. That's right responded Valerie trying to stay calm. She was never good at talking to children, and she couldn't tell them to go away either. Maybe her previous self if she had made them leave, but her current self wasn't capable of that. Show us we want to see the long eyeness of Hakuryuku begged a somewhat excited boy. Be okay. Valerie would make the wings of divine dividing appear on his back, and the students looked at those beautiful wings and wondered odd it is called the divine dividing, it carries the vanishing dragon, Albion and it divides my opponent's power in half, and that power is added to my reserves. That's great white is as amazing as red, I say that red is better than white. It isn't true. White is better than red. And so a type of dispute began between the students who debated among themselves which celestial dragon was the best. Issei, Valerie, Drag and Albion watched in disbelief as these children argued over which of the two celestial dragons is the best. Was this serious? Please, there was already a dispute between both dragons to find out who was the best. And now there is a dispute between fans to find out which is the best. What plays that life gives without a doubt. He, it seems that even after everything that happened. There are still those who still believe in you, Haidu. Saji said smiling. Dot, I have found out that there are people who still support you and continue to believe in you. And that makes me happy. Well, I didn't expect that. Issei said honestly, she really didn't expect this. Oh by the way. Follow me, there is a class I have to show you. Saji suggested and Issei started to follow him. And once they both entered the Oro's Academy again, it took them a couple of minutes to reach a certain classroom. And you can see that this class is so popular that there were even students in the hallway. There is magic class. Saji informed Dodd it is one of the classes that is popular for those interested in rating games. Many people want to participate, so we had to increase the number of teachers and classes. Teaching basic magic is quite popular. Yo, magic lessons, huh? Issei said with some interest, and as he looked even further into the classroom, Roswis Sensei, Sensei, please teach us more. Roswis was surrounded by students who asked her various questions about magic. She is obviously very popular. Fire appeared, it was small, but it was fire. It seems that the students became capable of using fire after the basic magic class. Is incredible. I know. Saji reaffirmed what Issei said. Wow, this is a surprise. Issei heard a familiar voice behind him. And when he turned around, he was surprised to see Gondor in the place. 
She approached him just before he could feel her coming. The Friday. Grandma were you here? Ross was has also just noticed the presence of her grandmother in the classroom. I made a promise to become the special teacher for this event. Gonder said entering the classroom and receiving everyone's looks. It will surely be a good distraction before tomorrow's assembly. Just as Gonder said, the magic assembly was going to be tomorrow. So she wanted to be a teacher for today. And then, a little fairy emitting a green aura appeared in the classroom. The fairy moved her wings to fly between the students and land in the corner of the classroom. Gonder gently caressed the fairy. And that caught the full attention of the students. The source of magic how did magic appear? Does anyone know the reason? Gonder asked the students. I heard it came from predicting the future and witchcraft, that's right. Gonder to a student's response. Magic was born from prediction and incantations. I want to know something about it, I want to be able to do something like that, I want to do that for a person, I want it for a person. It was something created by magicians who wanted to help people. Gonder she is so good at explaining that the students, the adults, and even Issei and Saji listen attentively. There are higher and lower things in current magic that allows us to distinguish between them. But I want all of you to remember this. No matter the type of magic, it is sure to help the magician and the people around him. There is no such thing as useless magic in this world. Gonder's saying that there is no such thing as useless magic in this world stuck out to many. Without a doubt, that was a good phrase. So, let's end this conversation here. Gonder takes the floor again. Now, it may be rude, but how many of you want to be friends with a fairy? I, I, I. The students all raised their hands together, being excited. Hmm. Saji saw how a communication circle appeared in her ear and nodded to what was said by who called him. Hey, Hayadu. What's wrong? asked Issei. I received a message from Kaichu telling me to take charge of another classroom. And that she wants you to go to her office, she wants to talk to you for a moment. Oh, I guess that's fine. Issei didn't see a problem with what Saji said. I guess I'll see you later, right? That's how it is. Until then. Saji waved goodbye, walking past her towards her destination. Issei sighed at this and without further ado, decided to head towards the office where Sona was waiting for him. The Edo. D what did you want to talk to me about, Kaichu? Asked Issei a little nervous while sitting in front of Sona's desk. Well, to start. Sona took off her glasses and then cleaned the windows. As Tsubaki informed me, the other day, Ria's and his peerage seemed to show a rather mediocre level when it came to training. So, is that true? Sona asked, putting his glasses back on. The A, well. Issei scratched his cheek. You could say that yes. P but, I know that will be fixed with time. Something we don't have. Said Sona, narrowing her eyes. We are in a possible war against Klepeth, and the fate of the world depends on us, Team DXD. If they are unable to fight, they will be more of a hindrance than a help. And that worries me. I know. Issei sighed and nodded understandingly. That's why I've decided to fix things with them. Sona raised an eyebrow upon hearing that dot it won't be easy, and I don't want to give them false hope, but they need a reason to fight like before and be better. And I'm willing to give them to you. They depend a lot on you. Something understandable but at the same time useless if they can't manage on their own. It's almost like saying that my nobility is nothing if I'm not there to lead them. You're right. Issei had to agree with what Sona said and sighed. A few days ago he patched things up with Akeno-san, and now she has regained her fighting spirit. She will take care of the group in case Rias can't do it. I see. I'm glad about that. Sona nodded, somewhat satisfied with what she heard. The others are still missing, but. Issei stopped talking for a moment and then continued. Dot, it's not that easy. I can't go and talk to them normally without remembering what happened that night. At least I have to go, one by one. I'm not entirely aware of the matter or what caused you to leave, but I know that Rias and the others did something that made you leave, right? The silence caused by Issei was enough as a response for Sona. Dot, I'll take that as a yes. Sona sighed. She can be like that at times, being a bit selfish and hoping that others will get her intentions, instead of saying them directly. Although I don't blame her for being like that, after all, being selfish is part of nature. Of the demons. Oh really? Yes. Sona nodded to Issei's question. We are capricious beings, and we always long for what we cannot have. Which is still something normal for us, although now we are different from what we were in the past. As it is always said, old customs are never lost even with the change of generation. An example of that is the demons of the current government who still follow the will of the true deceased mass. I guess you're right. Still. Sona sighed. You could do everything I couldn't do. What do you mean? Issei asked. Simple. Razor's engagement, the existential problems of Kiba Kun, Gaspar Kun, Kaneko San and Akeno. You have taken charge of Rhea's problems and solved them. Practically, you have done in just a few months what she couldn't do in almost nine years. Fix the problems of her nobility. Issei was almost speechless at what Sona said. In fact, she never thought that he actually did what she couldn't. Also. 
Selna placed her hands on her desk. I've been friends with Rias for a long time. However, I couldn't do anything even though I'm his lifelong friend. Because I'm a high class devil, that's the custom between us. Not being able to help another even if we wanted to. I couldn't overcome these obstacles because I was trapped by the facts. I couldn't do anything for her in the place I am in. You have solved all her problems without thinking about the facts. And she was very happy about that. And she was very jealous of you. Issei felt strange hearing that from Sona. You solved all the problems that I couldn't solve. I would have liked to thank you for that under other circumstances. And despite the current differences between you, thank you for saving Ria's, Haidu Kun. No, Issei Kun. Issei was surprised to hear Sona call him by her name in such a familiar way. He would have expected many things from her, but not this. Still, he can't help but feel a little honored that someone like Sona calls him by her first name so familiarly. B, it's okay. S I only did what I thought was right at the time. Although I admit that I should have thought things through a little before. Issei scratched his head a little embarrassed. Even with our differences, I will protect you all, because that's how I am, Kaichu. You can call me Sona if you want, sometimes in private. And I will call you Issei Kun. Issei was almost taken aback upon hearing that. Dot and also, from what I understand, congratulations on your courtship with Valerie Lucifer. I never thought you would be with your nemesis. He, what can I say? Life always surprises you like you don't imagine. You're right. Sona agreed with what Issei said. Dot and then, what do you think of the school we organized? Well, let me tell you, it's incredible. Issei said with an honest smile. Dot, I'm glad that they look after those who don't seem to have a fixed future, all because they don't have talent. If I'm honest, I didn't think like that before. Sona sighed. Dot, before meeting Tsubaki and the others, I also thought that talent was everything and that we shouldn't give importance to those who don't have it, but meeting Tsubaki, Saji and the others changed that, as did that Sarayrg San could achieve even without talent. Seeing what all of them were capable of, including your Issei Kun, made me think that maybe, if there is a future for the talentless. We just need to give them the chance to prove that, because not giving them that chance won't make them show what they are capable of. It was all that that drove me to this dream. Issei Kun, you and the others gave me a dream to follow. Because if I'm honest, before I didn't have a dream for the future, unlike Rias who wanted to be the champion of the rating games. And I'm grateful for that. Issei was speechless again at what he heard. I never expected that his actions and those of those who are equal to him were the impulse that Sona needed to know what his dream would be in the future. For now I ask you not to tell anyone about this, especially my peerage. Sona spoke again, taking a say out of his thoughts. I want to be the one to tell you personally. Some of them may think that I am never grateful for everything they do for me, but it is quite the opposite. And I hope to be able to tell you soon. I understand. In that case, I won't say anything about what we talked about. That's my promise, Sona. Issei said with a sincere smile. And suddenly, Sona blushed slightly upon hearing that, then shook her head and returned to his serene attitude. I thank you, Issei Kun. By the way, I heard that Leviatham Sama advocated for you so that you could build your school. Is that true? Issei asked, changing the topic. That's right. Sona affirmed and sighed. Normally I don't want to give one Isama political problems, and he had told her that he would abandon this so as not to cause problems for her, but. One Isama managed to convince me to go ahead with this. According to her, he has his own methods to avoid lawsuits. And Archduke Aguirre's help was an extra. Sona smiled slightly. Dot. At least there are times when she's not so childish. Um. Are you? Are you ashamed of your sister? Issei asked, now becoming a little calmer. Although I admit that there are times when she embarrasses me. That doesn't mean she hates her. Sona smiled sadly. Dot. Despite all that, I love her. She's been there for me whenever she needed help. Even with her Mayu duties, one Isama always took care of me since she was little. But now, that's not so common anymore. I don't understand that much. After all, I don't have any brothers. Neither major nor minor. What Issei said caught Sona's absolute attention. Dot. She always wants a little brother or sister, or even an older one. But circumstances did not allow that, to the point that it is almost impossible. Hmm? What do you mean by that? Sona for some reason, she felt that she was about to hear the sad story of a family. Simple. It is because of something that is called. Empty belly syndrome. Sona was almost shocked when she heard what Issei said, wanting to make sure that she heard correctly, and apparently, she did. Dot. Issei Kun, you. Your family. It seems you already guessed what I mean. And it's just as you think. Issei said, interrupting Sona. Dot, maybe one day I'll tell you. Since this is something that I never told Riaz and the others, and neither did Valerie who told me his whole life and what he suffered. But I will only say this, Sona san. Issei does suddenly his eyes became expressionless. Dot. You and Rias are lucky to have siblings who will always be there for you at all times when your parents can't. And it's better to appreciate that, because. 
Not all of us are blessed for that. Issei turned to see Sona face to face. Don't keep quiet about what you think about your one Isama and cherish the time with her, because there may even come a time when siblings separate. Now it was Sona's turn to be absolutely speechless that even she was wondering. What was the hidden story behind the Haidu family? She already has a clue to know that even without Issei telling her, but she still doesn't deny that she wants to know a little more. But the last thing Issei said left her even more thoughtful. Did she really feel like herself? Is having a brother really a blessing to others? Hasn't she valued Sarah full enough despite everything she did? If you'll excuse me, Sona-san. I think I should go. Issei stood up from her seat, and Sona paid attention to him again. I've been here a long time, and there are things I still want to see. Anyway, I'm glad I was able to talk to you with such familiarity. And then, see you. Issei bows slightly and leaves the office, carefully closing the door. With that, Sona was left alone in her office, now deep in thought about everything Issei said. And with the feeling still in her heart, Sona created a small magical circle of communication in her ear and waited for a few minutes. How many seconds, until finally feeling that they had answered. Nisama, it's me, Sona. Oh, so Tan how unexpected, since you never call me unless it's something important, Seraph Leviathan's voice was heard on the other end of the communication line, but anyway, how are school going? D all good. More than 400 have come. Sona said feeling a little better upon hearing her sister's voice. It's great news oh, I would like to come see you, but all this work prevents me. How unfair, yes, what a shame. Sona said to herself mentally as she laughs lightly. Oh, by the way, so Tan. I'm working on the next episode of my TV show, and I would really like you to be on the what saying. This way we will spend time together. Yes. I would like to. Sona said smiling and preventing a tear from coming out. That seriously Seraphol sounded totally elated, she wasn't expecting that response. Still. Great so Tan she was totally sure that you would refuse like you always do, and that makes me think that you are sick. Is something wrong with you? Seraphol asked now with a worried tone. Then it's nothing, one Isama. It's just that I Isona tried to speak, but her words didn't come out. Feeling a lump in her throat. Damn, sometimes she hates that she can't express herself with sentimentality. What's going on so Tan? Your one Isama is here for you, you can tell me anything. Sob. I just want to tell you that. I love you, one Isama. Finally Sona was able to let go of her feelings, everything she had been holding back came out with those words, and Serafo was almost speechless at what she heard, and before for her to say something. I have not properly appreciated everything you have done for me, and that is why I want to tell you this, and thank you for everything. You are always there for me even when I don't ask you, and that makes me happy. Therefore, thank you Wani Sama. Tsulozo Wuweaik I love you too Sotan, you don't know how happy it makes me to hear those words from you, one Isama is happy Sona laughed between light sobs, upon hearing what Serafal said wait, what is that noise? Perhaps. You're crying my one Ichan is crying. I won't allow that I'm going there immediately, a frantic Serafal suddenly cuts off the communication, and Sona knew that she would come to see her. She can't be fixed. Sona said to herself, with a smile that countered the tears she was wiping away, and she took off her glasses to avoid staining them. It was the first time since she was a child that her sister had heard her cry. Sona never let herself be carried away by her emotions, but this time she let them flow. And if she was her sister, she wouldn't mind being seen like that. Although Sona couldn't help but look at the door where Haidu Issei came out. Thank you, Issei-kun. You have my total gratitude. Sona thanked mentally. And without knowing it, a feeling that she had never felt before began to be born in her. But only time will tell. Already in the halls of the Oro's Academy, Issei walked calmly to distract himself. Although he seemed a little down for some reason, apparently the topic of the brothers was like a blow to him. But suddenly, she felt a sensation in his being that made him smile slightly. She didn't understand the reason for this sudden feeling, but she felt that she had achieved something good. Issei, is everything okay? Upon hearing that voice, the brunette saw that in front of him was Valerie. Yes. Everything is very good. Issei said with a smile. And with that, the celestial couple went to see the rest of the Oro's Academy, as they walked hand in hand. Later in the evening of that day. After finishing the first day, the Gremory group, Citri and Issei in company with the teachers, enjoyed the break time, which was each person's free time. And after finishing a final confirmation of what they would do tomorrow, everyone went to their respective rooms. The place where everyone was staying was a building inside the school, and it was planned that that place would be the students' dormitory. The inside of the building had impressive equipment, and there were gigantic bathrooms, both on the boys' and girls' sides separately. Ah, how good it felt. Issei, somewhat pleased, dried his wet hair with a towel while he dressed in his sleeping clothes and went to his room to sleep, and Sona made an exception for him. He could sleep with Valerie. According to Sona, it is his way of thanking her for the talk they had, which Issei thanked wholeheartedly. 
Anyway, as he headed towards his room, Issei began to think about everything they would do tomorrow. He knows that because of his current status, he can't help in this school thing even if he wants to, not even Sona can do anything. Although today he had conversations with several of the demon students who still believe in him. And they even asked for a mock fight between Issei and Valerie, so they could see their abilities, which the celestial couple complied with, obviously they restrained themselves as best they could, since going serious even with their normal armor could destroy the school, but it was worth it. Dot. Compared to today, maybe tomorrow if he can do something to kill time. And it was in that. Issei Kun. Upon hearing his name, the aforementioned looked in a certain direction and could see Roswis who was wearing grey pants and a white long-sleeved shirt. Maybe it's his nightwear. Oh, Roswis Ann, is something wrong? Issei asked. Can you accompany me? I want to talk about something with you. Roswis said with a sad face and lowered gaze. Issei was a little surprised by that, but he still nodded in agreement. And so, they both walked through the corridors and climbed some stairs in order to reach a balcony of the building where they could see the courtyard of the Oro's Academy and the city. From a distance. Wow, what a view. Issei admired the view and it was undoubtedly a very good one and then he remembered one thing and taking advantage of the fact that he was alone with Roswis. Roswis and why were you investigating 666? You may be aware of this, but... Roswis looked down. The existence of 666 was always a hypothesis and was never confirmed. Still, the Great Red that also appears in the Apocalypse does exist. That's what prompted me to research it. Finding an answer was almost impossible. But I wanted to know what kind of being 666 was, so I used the number 666 and 616 to investigate the documents related to it. Roswis smiled slightly. Still, I didn't get any answer. But maybe the answer behind the calculations and the formula that I couldn't solve, hide something behind what these people are. I see. Issei said and then remembered that he even asked Office about 666, Trahiksa. Because if she is a being that appears together with the Great Red, she might know something. But Office responded by saying that she doesn't know much about 666, Trahiksa. Since she never met him. If Office knew how to defeat the Great Red and the location of 666, then the Old Mass Faction and the Hero Faction would have already asked her and used her weapons. Office didn't really know 666. Hey, Issei Kun. The aforementioned stopped by to see Roswis. If they ever manipulate me and use me for their purposes. I want you to kill me. Issei was almost shocked at what Roswis was asking of him, and from her expression, he could notice that she was serious. And that made him sad and angry. If I were used to harm my comrades and cause harm to this world, I would prefer death. I wouldn't be able to bear it if someone died because of me. Roswis's expression was full of sadness, while his eyes were full of determination. Please, don't say that. Issei said with a low voice that could be heard. Don't say something like it's my fault, or I'd rather die. Don't say that so lightly. Because there is no reason why you should die. But I if I am caught by Clippeth, I will definitely be used by them. Roswis grabbed his shirt with some force. You saw it and heard it. They are looking for me. Only I have the answer for them to achieve their goal faster. That is why I think the best thing is that. I won't let that happen. Unexpectedly, Issei grabbed Roswis from her shoulders and forced her to look into his eyes. If they appear again, I will definitely defeat them. Roswis was almost speechless at what she heard. I can't accept this. Call me an idiot if you want. I understand that sometimes sacrifices have to be made to achieve the greater good, even if it means sacrificing one life for many others, but. There's no way I think that way. Roswisan, I promise that I will protect you even if I have to give my life for it. What Issei said left Roswis speechless again, who blushed at Issei's look full of determination and security, he seemed determined. And she could feel her heart beating at that supposed statement. Obviously Issei realizing what she said, she became a little embarrassed as she let go of Roswis. Shit, telling her that and holding her like that, that would almost be a confession. Well I'm sorry. I spoke without thinking. Issei said embarrassed and controlling the slight blush on her face. He, thank you, Issei Kun. Ross was thanked with a beautiful smile that is rarely seen on her, while well, she wiped away a tear that wanted to come out. T I will take into account what you said. But if the case arises. Keep in mind that if you don't do it, I will commit suicide myself to save everyone. Ross was said seriously, indicating that she was serious. It won't be necessary, you'll see. Issei also sounded serious in what he said. We'll see. And also, thank you for listening to me. And unexpectedly, Roswis would kiss Issei on the cheek, leaving the latter almost in shock. And when he regained his senses, Roswis had already left the balcony. Heavens. I don't think I will ever understand how to treat women even if I spend a lot of time with them. Nu, no, do you think? Dreg responded sarcastically to Issei, who growled at that. To then leave the place and go to his room. 
and in one of the hallways near the balcony, Roswiss was leaning against the wall with a blush on her face while she tried to control her heartbeat. And I can't believe I did something so daring, but. Why did it feel good to do that and hear her words? Roswiss asked herself with her hand on her chest, listening to her heartbeat. And after almost a minute, she closed her eyes with a smile. Dot, I think it's true what I felt. I I love this say cunt. Roswiss shed light tears, being a little happy to finally see his feelings confirmed. Dot, please, let him everything goes well. The next day. The second day at Oro's academy had arrived. And in a certain room of the academy dormitory. Haidu Issei was waking up from his dream and felt a pressure on him from any side, and upon checking the cause of it, he found that Valerie was sleeping on his right side and Tiamat was on his left side, and they both used Issei's arms as pillows and were wearing their sleeping pajamas. Also, Issei could notice that above him, on his chest, they were sleeping. Kuroka and Lafay. Although this event surprised Issei a little, he remembered that at night not only Valerie joined him to sleep, but Tiamat and Kuroka were also included, and his most initial surprise was Lafay who also joined but did not notice. Complained. Issei sighed. Well. Day to day things. Bury what everyday things. Kuroka had woken up and as always, at least when she was with Issei, she had a sensual and at the same time daring expression on her face. It doesn't surprise me much anymore to wake up like this. But I still appreciate it. Issei said starting to caress Kuroka's head who purred at that. How he likes it when I even touch Nico's ears. Unai. If it were under other circumstances, I would give you something more pleasant. Kuroka said shamelessly, blushing Issei who more or less understood what he meant. He may be another time. I don't want Valerie to get upset. Issei whispers a little scared. Woo, what a shame Naya. Still. Licking her lips, Kuroka quickly licked Issei's neck, making him shudder for a moment. I'll settle for that. You really are a perverted Nakamata. I won't deny it. Said Kuroka triumphantly. You and why so much noise? Lefei started to wake up while she rubbed her eyes. In addition, she is only wearing a t-shirt that covers her below the waist. And from what Issei could feel, Lefei is not wearing anything else down there other than her panties that are covered by her shirt. And when Lefei stood up a little. Her good breasts almost fell out they come out of her shirt. Be good morning Lefei. See how did you sleep? Issei asked, wanting to avoid seeing Lefei's good chest. Damn, she's still growing, and yet she has an enviable body for those her age. Well. Sleeping with Issei Sen feels great. Maybe I'll get used to it. Said Lefei, smiling tenderly. Shit, her cuteness far surpasses Asia's seriously. And with that, Valerie and Tiamat also began to show signs of awakening. Oh well, time to start the second day at Oro's Academy. After breakfast and everyone gathered in the dining room, Sona and her group handed out today's schedules for those who were going to teach classes. And then Sona explained the programming for this day, and thus the day begins for the second day at the Oro's Academy. The members of the Grimory group in charge of giving lessons with the help of some members of Valerie's team, dispersed on the campus, thus beginning to teach their classes. Hiba and Zenovia were giving lessons regarding the nights in the sports area, as well as doing practical demonstrations. Enemy with pure power before they do anything. And Kiba explained the complete opposite of what Zenovia said regarding the fact that they have to use more techniques than anything else. Besides, speed is the most special trait of the knights. The children show signs of interest towards the two Gremory knights, who have different points of view. Arena was giving a lesson on the special angels curriculum. Angels are very rare in the underworld, and there were many children who had never seen an angel before in their entire lives. The white wings and halo of an angel are something new and mysterious to the children of demons. Obviously some demon students were somewhat afraid, since they had heard things about angels taking away bad children. Irina continued with her explanation in an orderly manner, and to the surprise of Issei who saw that from a distance, Irina no longer seemed as energetic as before, as she even seemed to get depressed when some children said that the angels were even bad, which Issei himself could not deny. Asia was mainly in charge of giving information regarding exorcists that she learned during her time in the church. To say that there was also fear on the part of the students when they said that the exorcists and the church are bad was enough to lower Asia's self-esteem a little, who still continued teaching her class. Arthur and Lefay were in charge of giving a subject to the students about the history of humanity and the historical figures who left their names marked in history. Obviously there was astonishment on the part of the students to know that Arthur and Lefay they descend from the famous King Arthur and the magician Morgana Lefay. Wanting to know more about historical humans, the Pendergon brothers told the stories of the mythological humans. The Amad even offered to give the students a subject in history about the race of dragons, the strongest race in this world. Obviously all the male students admired the beauty of the Dragon Queen, who made them come to their senses. So that they pay attention to the class, and Tiamat explained the different classes of dragons and their categories between who is stronger than who. The class of dragons that undoubtedly attracted the attention of many. 
Asper gave the students a lesson on vampires and their history. Obviously some students said that demons and vampires have been rivals and sometimes enemies since ancient times. Gasper panicked several times as he had to face the large number of people and questions from the students. Hineko reluctantly along with Kuroka and Biku, gave a class on Yao case and what they can do. And there was surprise to see that there were even some Yao case reincarnated as demons among the students who wanted to know more about their own species, such maybe because they were separated from their own. Still, this class was also normal, although there was some tension between the Nekashu sisters on behalf of Kaneko. Roswis continued to be in charge of the magic classes. That he remained as popular as yesterday. And Riaz and Akeno were giving explanations to the students about the duties of the king and queen of an entourage, which can be considered the most important lessons of all. Both Riaz and Akeno are still young, and there are many things they still need to learn. Both are still far from being able to teach anyone. And for that reason, they are speaking as senpais sharing the knowledge and experiences they have acquired so far. Despite this, it became a valuable lesson for the children who listen to them attentively with serious faces. And the student council members are also supporting the teachers. While Sona and Tsubaki are mainly dedicated to dealing with parents by giving them explanations or instructions. There aren't many people, but both the Gremory and Citri members are doing their best despite being too busy. On the other hand, while everyone is doing their best to teach the lesson they are in charge of, Issei along with Valerie, were at some kind of event where the students asked them questions, and they answered them. In addition to demonstrating their skills. Normally the two of them had nothing to do today, but the insistence of the students who wanted to know more about the two heavenly dragons, led them to this. All the students asked questions about how they could become stronger, and others told them what they wanted to become in the future. With some saying that they wanted to participate in the professional raiding games, others wanted to work in the laboratory of the mass territory and others to be personal guards of the mass. Without a doubt that must be the biggest goal of these children right now. No matter what kind of dream they have, no matter what kind of destiny they have, they will not be able to achieve that opportunity if there is not a place to study that fulfills their dream. For these children it now began to be a possibility. There are endless obstacles and trials they need to overcome to achieve their dreams and goals. Issei hoped that all of these children would attend this school. And even though there is no God, she couldn't help but pray for such a wish to come true. Because when he looks at the strong and determined eyes that these children have, they make him want it to happen even more. Issei knows that the only thing he can do now is lift their spirits, even if it's just a little to help them with their dreams and goals. His duty is to make them want to attend this school even more. Valerie also prayed for the good future that these children should obtain if they achieve their dreams. And he even told them something that only very few know. To say that the students were amazed to learn that the demons descend from the angels, the demons being the most corrupted part of them and that Valerie showed them his demonic light, is saying something little. Thought they were amazed to the extreme. And some ask if they could also use demon light, which Valerie says is possible, but requires practice. Since using it incorrectly could harm the user if this is a demon who tries to use the light. And while the session of questions and more to the celestial couple continued, something happened. At that moment. A creepy chill was felt by Issei and Valerie, along with a sensation that stimulated their sixth sense. And right after that, they had a mysterious feeling. And due to the sudden incident, everyone inside the campus looked up at the sky to witness the strange phenomenon. The purple color of the sky of the underworld began to disappear little by little, changing to a pure white color. And everyone panicked due to the sudden phenomenon. What is this? Some kind of event. Issei asked, wanting to stay calm and not let the students get scared. No. Otherwise, we would have already been informed about this. Maybe this is. While Valerie was trying to understand the situation, the sudden sound of a megaphone reached his ears. Students, family and teachers, please go inside the school building immediately. I repeat. Students, family and teachers, please go inside the school building immediately, that emergency announcement was heard coming from the megaphone scattered in the Oros Academy, and everyone heard the announcement loud and clear. Issei and Valerie could do nothing but expect the worst after hearing the emergency broadcast. Issei, Valerie upon hearing that voice, they both saw that Akeno approached them, let's go to the teacher's room, let's see what's happening as Akeno said, the celestial couple decided to follow her towards her destiny. Without a doubt, a possible great battle was going to break out in the Oros Academy. Let me know in the comments below if you guys want the next part. Also check out my other video that has been shown and left. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this video please like and share this video. And have a fantastic day bye.